Is It Smoking? Welcome to another episode of Is It Smoking? Episode 16. I hope you guys are enjoying the rollout of all these episodes. We're coming at you with full packed, knowledgeable episodes. We're not just here to entertain you, we're here so you can learn a thing or two. Today I got my two go uh, hosts with me. I got Drip on the left of me and Joey on the right of me. Let me let the, these boys introduce themselves and then we'll get into our guest. Yes, sir. Yes, sir, man. You know it. Drip sauce over here. You know, you got four kids lighting one up real quick. Yeah, and we got a very special guest with us. CEO of Million Dollar Lux. Founder of Elite Terp Society. Mr. De La Creme himself. Tony C, man. Yeah, man. Go ahead, give a quick introduction about yourself, man. Tap in real quick. What's up, everybody? You already know my name is Tony. I'm born and raised in Los Angeles, California. Pioneer in this cannabis movement. We got blessed to be licensed under social equity and to uh, embark on our journey into this cannabis world. So let's do this. Hell yeah, man. That's what's up. So we are we we're gonna be talking about weed majority of the time. So we could and get to hash, the weed brown and some hash and some hash. We're gonna talk about a lot about that. So let's get with the um. Let's do the million dollar lux first, you know. So we, let's get that out the way, and then weed for the rest. I'm saying. So explain that a little bit. <coughs> but hold up, hold up, hold up, hold up, hold up. Before we even get into all that, cause what do you think? Do you think? I can't wait to dive into that. <coughs> I want to know when's the first time you smoked weed, bro. When's the first time that smoke touched your chest, my nigga? I'll tell you right now. I got put on house arrest when I was 13 years old. They put the ankle bracelet on. Shit. I couldn't go to school. I couldn't do nothing. And one of my boys, that was my neighbor, he was already kicked out of school and shit, so he just kept coming over. All my parents would leave the house, and he would come over, and we would just chill all day. And one day, he just brought his bong over, and that was it. <laughs> <laughs> Pretty much took a, took a bong hit, threw up. That was my virginity <laughs> taken from me, and uh, it was a never-ending story. He said, bong then. hit, threw up. <laughs> that's I'm, it, at 13. That's yeah, sir. 12, 13 is damn near everybody's age, yeah, bro. Yeah. It's, it's from the 11 to 13 window. Right? In that range, all the time. And it's funny, because if you fast forward to now, you're still in that bong realm, but just graduated. Oh, for sure, bro. Like, you know, smoking has definitely become a part of my life, so very happy for my homie, who I don't even talk to no more, who did that for me, so. God bless that's him. That's crazy. God bless him, man. Yes, sir. Yes, sir. God, God bless him. lifestyle. He planted the seed, and it sprouted into this beautiful plant. Right? So, from 13, when you first smoked, how, like, did you ever think you would be where you're at today, bro? Like, Absolutely not. Absolutely not. We, this all started off as a passion hobby, you know. I was just, I knew I shouldn't have been doing it, but it felt good doing it. I was doing bad shit with my friends, you know. That's just, <laughs> what, what's another best thing you could do? Roll up with your homies in the park, you know, in the car you're not supposed to be in, you know, like smoking. Kicking it and doing it, doing the dirty. Yeah. <laughs> the you know, you know, I feel like that used to get you more high back in the day when you adrenaline, was like, little yeah. adrenaline, adrenaline rush. Like, oh, I'm not supposed to do this right now, bro. Yeah, that yeah, used yeah, to get yeah. you so much more high. For sure. Like, that was with the fueling like factor. It all was like we had to find the spot. These spots were not regular spots. <laughs> Hell no. Nah. Like in the hills in front of like twenty million dollar houses and shit. Cause Fast. we grew up in Hollywood, so it's like you can only go up the hills and it's like Hollywood Hills, you already know what kind of fucking houses they got there, bro. It's like, you know, mansions upon mansions. I got my water, brother. Thank you. Okay. Always yeah. stay hydrated. Yes, yes, yes. Hey, Shout out to our producer, DJ man, always keeping us right. DJ let them know, man. God Shout bless out to DJ. DJ. Bro, this show. Yo, bro, you know what's something I appreciate about people that smoke rosin and, and smoke wax? And because and, it's not the easiest tax. It's not as easy as rolling a paper. You know what I appreciate about you guys? You guys been pushing quality from the jump. Like when weed was first started selling and people were like, oh, you're into that wax stuff? You could always guarantee a good high with your wax friend. That's what I always liked about my homies that did wax. I knew I was going to take it to the next level with them. Because. <laughs> When I'm smoking, when you're looking for good weed, that's, that's always part of it. You feel me? Like, is it good? Is it strong? Is it going to get me faded? But one thing I always appreciated about my niggas that smoked wax is all they stuff always got me faded. So talk a little bit about that, like taking that first bong rip and not just being satisfied with that high, always pushing the envelope, always trying to like, you know what I'm saying? So, I mean, you know, it all started off, you know, I got five on it, you know? <laughs> that's, that's where it all began. Yes, all you needed was five. And all you needed was 
to be the first or second to go because if you're the third or the fourth, you got played on your five dollars. Back, you know? back. <laughs> gone by then. Yeah, it's all it's all but. Yeah. So sure. you know if you got in on that on that five dollar blunt and you got to hit greens, whoo, and you know eventually eventually you you know you start smoking more and more and more, and um, I was smoking like probably three blunts a day steady for like. I don't know, like three, you had four five years. on all, all of them, or just no, no. Of? Like this is, I started with the five on. Yeah, <laughs> it's like five. I got three of them. No. <laughs> no, no, no. Then you start going buying your own. You got the plug. Before you don't have the plug. You got to yeah. five on yeah, it. Yeah, start. Homie, it start. smoke with the homies and shit. Exactly. Peace I got up. the number. I can't give. I can't get a number out. You know, exactly. only I could call exactly. type shit. Exactly. So eventually, yeah, I got my plug, and I started, you know, picking up more and more oh, shit. Nice. Tell him, tell him. And um, I remember. The pivotal moment in my flower consumption was when I discovered the hash lounge. Mm. Ooh. So I remember when. What the, year was this, if, if you remember? I don't. I can't tell you what year it was, but I know Too how high. old I know how old I was. Okay. Right. So back in the day, shit. back in the day, um, to get a prescription, you had to go to a doctor and. Um, you know, they would see you, and then they would look at you for, like, three minutes, and then they would let you out with a paper, right? Right. <laughs> and then I, I was 16. I couldn't get a paper because I had to be 18. So <coughs> I, I figured out, like, a little loophole at, like, a young age where I don't even know if I'm supposed to be talking about this, but uh, I pretty much would make my own prescription on Microsoft Word. I would type that shit up. No way. That's so funny. And uh, I would put like a real doctor with his real information. And then I would put the phone number to a burner phone. Yeah. And then I just seen how when you go to the, to the, to the store, it's the same routine. Every place that I would go, they would take your information and call the number on the paper. The girl at the, ca- the register don't really know anything, right? Yeah. So they call the number on the paper. And it's like, hello, this is doctor's office, blah, blah, blah. I'm calling to verify a patient. And then they read the name. And then on the other line, like, yeah, he's verified for a year. He's good to go. <laughs> so I learned that. I was like, that's it? That, that's, that's it? Shit. So I just had my that boy. That was it. Was Your boy in the car that's with the it. phone. <laughs> yeah, I were mobbing it. I already bro. know. I was like, <laughs> drain out of the ass of the phone. That was it, bro. Yeah. That was it. So we were in every store, and I was the only one who had the sauce for this shit, bro. <laughs> so I would sell these bitches for $350 with the burner phone with the script. The script, dog. yep, the script. Oh, I got all my youngsters you were, in hey, all the stores. You was a script killer or what? <laughs> hey, were you the script killer or the script maker? No <laughs> comment, no comment. That's That's just funny. That's different. Yeah. <laughs> in, 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 high, in, high, in high school, some kids were selling hot Cheetos and sodas. You were selling rec. Uh, yeah. That's fine. I, I was getting, I was the <coughs> gatekeeper for you to get into the store and not have to go through the plug, right? Right, right. So now we got, Le- we, yeah, we, got we got all my boys into the stores, right? We all go in the stores. Now we're, we're active shoppers everywhere, all over the city. Anywhere we're doing specials, we're going through all the newspapers, any coupons, any buy one, get one, first time patient. We had... The whole thing written out. Every deal in Southern California, we would drive for miles. No, bro, we would just come away. up, come up on everybody. Like we would Fuck get all free My shit bad. at a young age. You know what I mean? Like we don't got no money. Yeah. We're like fucking sixteen years old. We're That's, carpooling to you know Rancho yeah, Cucamonga. Yeah, the next yeah. fucking stop to get drank, bro. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> or whatever you were getting. Exactly. I remember that shit miles and miles. Oh, they don't gotta hit. Fuck you. Hit the next one. Hit the next exactly, one. Exactly, bro. So we were on that weed tip. We were trying to fucking damn this shit's good. Who the fuck rolled this? I did, bro. bro that's just right clean. Here, yeah, I'd be rolling hash hold up. Professional that's roller right here. Well, amen to you, bro. You're rolling hands. <laughs> Thank Guys. you, brother. I it's a gift, that. bro. It's I like it's like it, having bro. a shooter on your team, you know? Yeah, sorry. Yes, they shoot out to curry every time. Sometimes <laughs> I even tell them like, look, my boy, like I tell them that stuff like on the side, I'm like, dog, I think you handle the show. I just I'll just roll them, you know, because you need a good <laughs> roller, you know, and someone because it's a weed, you know, you gotta have flour and then you, bro, fuck, bro. Th- yeah, if I dabbed it, I'd be like, damn, bro, I don't dab like that. Look at this setup, yeah, yo. Dog, this like, is every this day is a setup. I travel with this shit every Yeah, day. that's a setup, bro. Like I know if y'all don't, I don't know. I can't even say that. That's crazy. <laughs> anyway. I just imagine if I dabbed. So, going back to it, we're moving around. We're getting all these little freebies. We're, you know, we're, we're trying to get as much stuff as we can so we can smoke good. The whole, all the homies partying together. We have a, the biggest variety of weed. We got this little big chest full of shit. Edibles, just help yourself type shit, right? Yeah. Uh, so, 
we stumble upon the dab lounge the first one i ever seen in my life like there was i don't even know how to explain it. it's like we walked in and there's a dispensary and then they're like yo by the way when you guys are done thank you for shopping but go upstairs and we have this little you know little vibe well, we're like okay cool we go upstairs and <coughs> we're like yo there's literally a bar <coughs> and they're just different bongs and they're just smoking weed and smoking hash. And I don't think I've ever seen really how you smoke hash at this time. Like, it's like something I heard of or like I seen it at stores, but we were smoking weed, you know, mm -hmm. like keef, weed, whatever. It wasn't yeah. like hash was like some foreign shit to us. Right. Like the bubble hash? Remember yeah, that? straight Moroccan bubble hash. Remember that? Yeah, that's one with the hot wand. Yeah. yeah, yeah, yeah. That's all. Imagine I walk into the fucking hot wand in Pori. I remember you know? that shit. <laughs> yeah, yeah, yeah. So, they had a hard on. Oh, uh, yeah, bro, I walked up and homie behind the cash register, behind the register is like, He's like, oh, it's you guys' first time? Welcome. He's like, first time, first hits on us. Oh. I'm like, what? First hits on you? I'm like, run it. Yeah. <laughs> I'm like, I don't even know what this is. Run it. Yeah. <laughs> Let me get like, that shit. Bro, I remember this shit. And they took a fucking hookah bowl, put a charcoal in that bitch, blowtorched it until it was red hot. That's back in the day. They shit. put it on the table, and then they put a fucking booger of some black Moroccan hash, finger hash, like yep. the old school like hash. Like scissor hash. Scissor hash. Yeah. Put, it, put a little ball right on that bitch, and then they put this big glass dome over, over it, it. Mm. with two hoses. And they're like, here you go, two people, have fun. <laughs> You're lit. That goes Yo, this crazy. Is, bro, bro, let me tell you this, because this thing is, doesn't stop going. You're just... Yeah, you're smoking. That shit stays for... It's like a little ball, too. Bro, yeah, I took probably 15, 20 of those in a row. I hyperventilated. Dog started sweating. I blacked out. <laughs> in there? In the fucking hash lounge, dog. <laughs> I woke up. 15 minutes later, I'm like, yo, what the fuck just happened? My boy's like, yo, you just passed out. <laughs> fuck, no. Yo, so you got a different love for the hash, bro. Oh, yeah, bro. I was there every day at that spot. I was literally there religiously with the whole team, like 15, 20 deep, like four, five, six hours a day. At one point... Like, I was damn near working there for free <coughs> just to be part of that motion. The people that were coming there and wanting to be a part of this experience were the pioneers of this cannabis industry today. Wow. A lot of my friends that I met, shout out G-Shock, a lot of people I met in the game that are like my brothers in this shit literally came from La Brea Collective. La Brea, I was just going to ask you. That was La Brea Collective. Wow. You know what I mean? That's where it all started, bro. I'm not even going to hold you. Oh, there was two spots wow. that started my journey in this whack shit. I will stand on it. It was Kind Meds in the Valley and La Brea Collective in the city. And if it wasn't for those two establishments, I would have never became who I became today because all the knowledge, all the experience that pushed me into like going even further and like oh whoa I really like this is cool as shit I want to make this I want to be a part of the community I want to you know excel that whole energy was from those two places right wow mm -hmm. so between being able to go to all these stores and see all these brands and smoke all this crazy flower from a very very young age I kind of like pressed the cheat code and like skip like a lot. five ten years right yes sir most people gotta wait until they turn tw 21 whatever to get the card and then right. yeah. like, bro I was already there been there already done there that. we're smoking King Louie Platinum OG shit like canned weed from Hawaii at like 16 bro man like they, you know what I mean like we were already figuring out what is what like Blackberry Kush Banana OG like um, sour diesel, av gooey, like we were smoking shit that people today can't smoke, you know, with the med card. Facts. Because so, it's hard to find or they just don't have access. Exactly. But bro. one thing that I really like that you said, bro, because I'm an LA native myself and I feel this played a big advantage to my success in LA with all the different jugs and just the different clients that I've had for different businesses. You understood LA and the Valley. Understood. Like being able to jump from LA, the Valley, Santa Clarita, to go from all these different cities, it's, it's I think it's a cheat code in itself. For sure. And for you to go to two everywhere. shops, yeah. you were just at the mecca of both of these cities, just downloading information. And you're there at such a young age that even in business, you know, sometimes you got to waste a little time to get to know a partner. You didn't care. You were so young. You were just getting to know everybody, just closing <coughs> and, and just building that Rolodex. 
Shout out to that, bro. Because yeah, I'm still... I, anytime we listen to people's story, I like to think about it as a movie. And I'm looking at you as the kid that got in trouble. Boom. Now your homie comes through, sees you mad as fuck, introduces you to weed. Boom. Now you're trying to reintroduce your friend to something cool that you found. The lounge, this dispensary. That's how it went down, literally. Keep going, bro. Keep going. Yeah, that's literally how it went down, bro. The, this, bro. Let me tell you something. This is just the beginning, bro, because what happens next is, like, sometimes I have trouble believing this shit, you know? I mean, the people that really know me know what, I kind of, what kind of shit I had to go through, what kind of mountains I had to climb through to get to where I am today. There really will be a movie one day, bro. Trust me on that. Trust me on that. Yeah, I'll watch it. So, <laughs> I'll watch it. So now, I'll watch it. So now I'm at the Dab Lounge. I already got the knowledge. I got all my friends. I got the guy who invented the skillet what? as my mentor. Wow. How did that relationship even happen? <coughs> How did that happen? Whoa. That, who do crazy. you think provided the tools for the dab lounge? So now I'm sitting at the dab lounge with the guy who made the skillet from yeah, Canada. Shout out Hashmaster Cud from Canada. Okay. And it go with the time you said when you blacked funny. out, a lot of people would have been like, yo, I'm done. I quit. I'm never God. doing this again. That you, to me. I'm it was from, like, oh, I'm no. from Los Angeles. Man. Oh, no. Let let me, shit, let's go thing. harder. Let's go harder. And then, boom, all these next steps just start happening yeah. right after. And that's, like, that's not quitting. Because even myself, earlier, when like these years that you're talking about, it wasn't as fancy and as cool as you have it now, where if I'm get, trying to get into this, it's more gravitating. Back in the day, like you said, oh, it was bro, a skillet we were, and a nail, nigga. Bro, it, was, it was literally <laughs> a Home shit. Depot <laughs> propane torch, big ass torch. And this metal skillet, yeah, you bust this thing out anywhere, dog. You look like a crackhead. Crack yeah. yeah. like, you can't tell people, yo, I'm smoking refined hashish. They're like, They're nah. Like, that, that still bro. sounds like you're smoking crack. Niggas are like, what? Yeah, dog. <laughs> hashish? So, that only works in like in the East Coast. Like, oh, yeah, only certain people could take that terminology. They're going to be like, nigga, what? Yeah, yeah they're going to look at you like, no, bro, you're still smoking crack. Yeah, yeah. yo, sh- <laughs> shout out to Abu Hashish. Remember? Yeah. We tried their brand with Ludi from Taylor Gang. Just because. Yeah. They, were, they, they, they had some good shit. Yeah. So, I'm, uh, are, we, are we doing the, the dab lounge? I got all my knowledge. I met all these cool people. Doing and this shit. guy is your mentor that created the so, gear. So, he, he was like, I would come there and sit and smoke, and he'd be there all the time. He'd be there because there would be girls that were working the bar, and he was like that guy that would just like to hang out there and shit. So, right. you know, take dabs, and talk to people, network. Yeah. So. Eventually, I start talking with him, and like he'd be like, "Oh yeah, this is this type of uh, hash oil, and then this is this type of hash oil, and this is an indica, and this is sativa, and you can see the color. This is more amber. This is more gold." And he started like putting shit into perspective. And I never really asked those questions, you know? Right. In you that world you were still enjoying it. Exactly. I didn't think about it that in depth. Do you have a favorite now? A favorite indica sh- hybrid or s- so sativa? So nowadays, every single strain, for the most part, is a hybrid. There is no such a strain There's as no just indica or anymore. sativa. Those strains are it's dinosaurs. Like, it's just sativa mm. not watered down now. Like the mm. Everybody bred something times something times That's something back with something. And, and too far. Far. we're too far now. No, you yeah. heard him. He called them dinosaurs. Yeah. That's what dinosaurs. it is. Yeah. They're That's relics. Crazy. They're relics. If you still got them, you can come back with a comeback like crazy. If you got the old school sour diesel, you got the Master Kush, the Avgui. You know the champagne. Yeah, them them all cuts. Them cuts strings. seem extinct nowadays. The candy Kush. Oh my yeah, god! Yeah, see that. Yo, but for the most part, you grew up in Southern California, right? I grew up in Los Angeles. I grew up in Hollywood, and uh, then I moved to the Valley. Okay, fine. So that was pretty much why I've been my home base. But mm, it's like, a great place to be, brother. So making all these contacts, making all these friends, <clears throat> I'm moving around these stores. And I bump into a guy with a big duffel bag, right? And I never knew anything about trapping, right? I don't even think trapping was a thing. People were trapping, but it wasn't called trapping. Like, it wasn't, you know. Mm-hmm. So I'm, I'm just waiting in line to get into a spot, and this dude with a big, big hockey bag, I'm standing there talking mm. with him for, like, waiting for, like, 20 minutes because there's three people out at, at a time in the store. Mm. And I just happened to be sitting with him. We super nice white guy, right? Mm. So we start chopping it up. He gives me a bunch of free weed. And um, before you know it, mm. me and that's my boy, you know. I'm, I'm chilling with him. He's coming through my apartment. We're smoking. And he's a farmer from up north, you know. And we, we make a good relationship together. And uh, he started taking me up to the farms. 
and I, I was like 17, I think. I was wow. 17 years old. You're moving quick. 17 years old. I go up to Redding, California, first time ever, and I see an indoor and outdoor grow for the first time in my life, and I just, like, shit myself. Like, I, I don't I remember when I was there. I was just, like, I remember sleeping at night, and I couldn't go to sleep because I knew where I was sleeping had so much shit around me. I could not force my body to <laughs> just go to sleep. I was just thinking, like, yo, there's, like, 20 different ones over there on that side, and there's, like, 30 more on this side, and they're all different. And I'm like, yo, I don't understand where <laughs> I am. Like, I'm going to wake up, and I'm going to be able to smoke all of this? <laughs> and I'm laying there thinking about this, and I'm like, yo, I wake up in the morning like a kid on Christmas, and I walk downstairs, and I'm like, yo, we can go outside now? He's like, yeah, bro, let's go. We hop on this ATV thingy, and we start going through these fields, and oh, I'm like fuck. smelling these plants, and I'm like, I'm like, is this real? Like, <laughs> that's lime green candy and this and that. And um, I remember just, uh, you know, being all, around, all obsessed with it. And um, that was like my first real plug up there. But I didn't really have any emotion, so I didn't know what to do with that information. That was, it was like a cool thing that I was like, I went up to the vineyards, yeah. saw some shit, came back. You know what I mean? It wasn't like, what do I do I, with that information? Was, exactly. So now I'm coming back down here. And, uh, just I need telling to, everybody. No, I don't tell nobody. This is illegal, bro. Yeah, <laughs> yeah this is a while I'm, back. I'm, right. I'm, I'm, I'm looking at homie like where his family lives and like where. Yeah, this is back in the day. I'm, 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 I'm keeping this is not now. Bro. Like yeah, sometimes that's where nah, we get it confused. We nah, think that we're still in the now, but true. it's like back in the day. Like hell no, nah, bro. You couldn't really talk about this shit. Was it, like, it, it was crazy, bro. People used to look at we like crack when you smoke that shit too. I ain't gonna lie. Hundred yeah, percent, they stare at you. I remember this kids would tell me like, "You on crack, bro?" I'm like, "Bro, you." You stupid. <laughs> <laughs> tell him like, yeah. tell him like uh, if I'm on crack, you will be on crack <clears throat> later too. So when I came, you know, when I, I have this homie now, and I'm I'm jugging and finesse and trying to survive, and you know, in Hollywood, it's expensive, bro. I'm on my own. I was on my own. So I was 17. I moved out of my parents' house, um, but you know, my parents had a situation, so I had to move out, and I was on my own at like 17, pretty much taking care of myself. So I need to get um, a job. So I was looking for a job on Craigslist. I was doing cold calling, telemarketing, door-to-door -door sales. I was selling Verizon Fios TV. I was selling whatever I could sell. Solar panel fucking installations and re-stucco in your house. And, well, I mean, if I could, bro, I, I remember I even went on a tour. Yo, 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 listen up, bro. We're talking liquid death water, the illest hydration moving out there. Picture this. It's not just water. It's pure mountain magic. Straight from the Alps. So when you need that refreshment, that's the next level. You go for liquid death water. It's not a drink. It's a statement. So whether you're in the studio dropping beats or on the grind, keep it real with liquid death water. Back to the podcast. Sales is just in your genes. Yeah, bro. I've been doing that shit for natural. a long time. I was on the campaign for Arnold Schwarzenegger when he wanted to ban the slot machines or some shit. I remember I was gathering petitions. You ever seen those dudes getting those little... Yeah. Oh, bro. <laughs> let me tell you, that was... Oh. Good, bro. Yeah, so, would you, hey, tell us something. Let, let me hear that. Let me hear that. So what? <laughs> Is there a cer certain amount of signatures you needed to get or something? Let me tell you, it's all a scam, bro. It's the biggest scam in the game. No way. I figured, because I, I was dudes like, what? The run those centers, bro, they be charging like $50 a signature, dog. That's how much they get paid. The dudes run in the center, so they go on Craigslist... And they'll put a bunch of ads for like $11 an hour. That's crazy. So you got a bunch of people like me running around for $11 an hour collecting these signatures, giving it oh, to Boss Man, and he's shit. selling them to the fucking mayor, whoever's campaigning that shit, $50 a signature, bro. Oh, he cashing out. Give you like That's $200. Bro, it's a jug, and nobody knows this Whoa. shit, dog. It's literally a So he making it like the whole 39 He's like, you keep the 11 <laughs> yeah, dog. whole hour, hour you make. whole time he was trying to ask for a signature, I said, what's up with a job? Man, yeah, I should have asked. Like, what's oh, up, so bro? I got what? this shit on Craigslist. I did $11.50 an hour. I'm like, run it, bro. I'm, I'll take it. So they were jugging COVID then when they were doing those tests on At, the street? Bro, I, that that was that's a, another conversation. We're going to get shut down if we talk about that. Let's just leave that out. The that case, was a bro. judge. So... Anyways, so I'm, I'm working. I'm working in this fucking in this call center, whatever bullshit. Get, getting these signatures, and every single person is like miserable as shit, right? And we got all these teams collecting all these signatures in the heat, just walking around for eleven fifty an hour, and they got these bosses just driving Porsches and like just you could tell they got money, bro. It's just funny how they like segregate the workers from the from the staff in the office. That's funny. One day during the meeting, they're like, 
they're like everybody go into the office room, whatever. All the all the workers got in there. They're having a meeting. I excused myself, went to the bathroom. I went into the wrong room. I walked into the room with the clipboards where they collect all the clipboards at the end of the day from oh, all the shit. workers. Yeah. So imagine you walk into a room with like thousands of clipboards filled out. What do you do? You get paid eleven fifty an hour. What do you do? I fucking took hundreds of those fucking clipboards, put them under my shirt, and walked the fuck out the door, dog. Oh yeah. I said I had a fucking stomachache and that I'm out, bro. I was getting paid eleven dollars and fifty cents an hour at home? to do nothing for months. Was at home? And I would just chilling. turn in filled out clipboards. Cool man. Oh, like, they were chilling, bro. I was turning as long as I turned in my clipboards all signed. Da -da -da, boom, dog. I got my paycheck. I was going to the movies. I was hanging out with my homies. <laughs> Bro, that's just how it was, bro. Get it how you got it, you know? So, so the hustle, hey, the hustle is good in your veins. Uh, bro, I, I mean, when you on your own and he you said got to get his signatures, dog. When you got that tummy rumble mm. and you go to McDonald's with your boys. Especially when you figure it out, too. Like, you're like, fuck, $50 a signature, huh? I'm on that. <laughs> yeah, exactly, bro. So, I mean, I remember days where we pull up at McDonald's with the homies in, like, one car. We pull up and we, like, take out change. Out of our pockets, literally not dollars, bro. Keep in mind, I'm talking quarters, dimes, nickels, and we will stack them into dollars and be like, boom, boom, boom. All right, all right, homies, you see, there's like seven. That's seven cheeseburgers, yep. or like we got to figure out, you know, we'll make chickens, make chickens, sweet whatever. Teas was 99 whatever, cent whatever, too dog. back in the day. Well, so we would do that, bro. That was some real shit. So, stack them dollars, you know, and and then to to go from from that to like working these jobs, I was like, okay, I'm gonna take this, I'm gonna take that, I'm gonna do this, I'm gonna do that. You know, I had to get it. <laughs> so I was nobody caught me, bro. It never happened, right? Hey. So, and then um, finally, I evolved kind of from doing all that like weird shit. And uh, I got a job working for Newport Butane, right? I know it's a complete different 360, right? But all that stuff was, like, not consistent. They would fire people. Like, it was not um, it was not a fun experience, right? I learned a lot from it, but it wasn't somewhere I wanted to be. So as soon as I evolved and I got a job working for Newport Butane, like, that was when my professionalism was born, right, in, in, a, in a work environment. What had happened was I was on Facebook, and I was obsessed with dabbing. I was on all these dab groups and shit all over the place. And the Newport guys were smart. They put ads in, the, in those groups for employees that wanted to work because they had motion. They were selling the butane for people making the hash. So mm -hmm. they already knew there was some motion with people making hash butane, right? So they, uh, butane hash. So I didn't know this. So I got a job for regular salary to sell <laughs> torches and lighters so and butane sick. and shit like that. But as I started working there, I started realizing that a lot of these customers are not stores. They're not smoke shops. I'm like, why am I delivering like, like, you know, 500 cans to somebody's house? Like, yeah. I'm like, maybe they're <laughs> selling them. Straight blasting shatters. <clears throat> so imagine this. I was the, the, when you were making hash, when you were blasting slabs, you would have to go to the smoke shops in downtown LA and you would have to buy master cases. You needed a whole reseller ID number, all this shit. And, and, and the 12 was like actively watching them, you know, them streets, bro. It's one street. You pull they up. buy a bunch car. of butane. They like, They already on. know who you are, bro. Yeah, you know, a lot of people get caught like that. So I was the guy that would pull up to your house with the butane. Mm. And Newport Butane was like the highest quality, most refined. The white cans, right? The white cans, exactly. The white cans with the rainbow lids. Yeah. So... I would be the guy that would deliver all of the um, the orders to all the customers in L.A. I had the exclusivity when I got the job. Nobody else in L.A. would, you know, everybody would go through me or through Boss Man. And um, I met a lot of people. You know, I met some I met some OGs in the game. I'm not going to say their names out loud. They're big-time brands now, some of the best people in the game. But uh, I remember I would deliver to their crib and... One time I walked in with this master case and they let me into their operation to show me. I was like, what the hell is this? <laughs> and then they had all these tubes and these ovens and like, yep. I, I was like, yo, what, 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 what's going on over here? I'm like, yo, this is, I'm selling this shit. You got to show me like, what, what is this? <laughs> and then like, we, I was already dabbing that hash oil because people had shatter. You were already into it. Yeah, I was already smoking hash, yeah. smoking shatter, I was smoking uh, crumble, whatever was around, but I didn't know how it was made. I never seen anything like it. Yeah. So they showed me how simple it was, and that, that was pretty much that the, was it. That, that was, was it. Introduction. <laughs> yeah, so now I'm working for the, the butane plug, right? Hmm. <laughs> You're the plug. I'm working 
all the Vegas trade shows, I'm like damn near probably like 18. Wow. This is before De La Creme, dog. This is before I even like stepped up to the playing field. This is all the work that had to be done, bro. Yeah. So now I'm working for Newport Butane. And I'm selling butane, and I'm doing the trade shows, and I'm meeting all the people and doing all this shit while going to all these hash lounges and networking. And I'm like, I'm, I'm a little kid still. I'm like 17, 18 years old. And I remember my job at Newport was like, it wasn't like consistently I was uh, like getting a salary. I was getting paid every day. So I would have to do trade shows. I would have to do deliveries. And there would be a lot of off time, right? And all this time that I'm doing this, my family is like, you know, kind of watching me. And they're like, yo, I see like you're in this weed shit. And I know there's a lot of motion in this weed shit. How can we take your charisma and your drive and your, you know, whatever I had? Because they don't know anything about weed. My parents don't even smoke weed, right? Mm -hmm. Uh, My parents are business people. Oh, yeah, they see the money. They, so they, they understood something. They're like, yo, maybe this, maybe he's on to some shit because he ain't just, like, he ain't doing it regular, you know, like, right. on some other shit. People that smoke for fun and smoke and don't do shit, but then there's... That's how I wish my parents would have saw Business people shit. smoking, like... <laughs> so, oh. so my, shout out to your parents, bro. Yeah, shout out to yeah, your parents, so, but, so No, no, they, 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 this is nothing, bro. I'm, I'm not talking about for Della Creme. I'm talking about this is like, we had before. a dispensary, dog. Yeah, this is before, damn. So listen, bro, I'm telling you. What, I, what, I, what I tell it you, bro? It's deeper, it gets deeper. What, what I tell you? Movie. I'm telling you, bro. Just wait. We'll, we'll just watch. Watch, watch. <laughs> so, Tuned in. We, got, we, got, we got this talk with an investor. My parents knew some guy that wanted to invest a lot of money into a dispensary. And that's why they came to me because they didn't know where to go with this information. So they're like, yo, can you... With your friends, connect. Can we do this? Is this like, is this a reality, or we, should we just tell them no? It's not possible. And I was like, yo, you know what? I I, I think we can. I think we can do this. And um, so they got this guy's money, and we opened up a fucking dispensary in San Bernardino. We opened up in a unincorporated area of San Bernardino where we didn't need a business license. Whoa, smart. Okay, we opened up right at the brink of a moratorium. And we finessed the paperwork with the attorneys in a way that the city grandfathered us in as they closed everybody else. I don't even know how the hell this happened, bro. God bless that attorney in San Bernardino. That be doing research. So, so, So check this out. For 360 degree radius in any direction you go, for 60 miles, You're the only shot. I'm the only shot. Yep. San Bernardino Patients Association, look it up. Wow. Riverside and East End Boulevard. So you had the whole San Bernardino on lock. Yep. So wow. we were seeing a thousand people a day. Wow. That's crazy. They were walking in like nothing. We had a 45 minute wait at all times. Jeez. Okay, we had 25 cash registers. We had a hospice program where we donated 20 pounds of marijuana for free for people with disabilities, Medicare, Medi-Cal patients, and hospice patients. And giving back to the people. How long ago? I was 18, bro. I'm 32 right now. Mm. So we had all these programs. We had growers coming to teach our patients how to grow. We had an association, and what that meant was we had members of an association there was no owner. We were all owners. So yeah. if they ever came for us, they would have to get everybody, all the patients included, yeah. right? Yeah. So we had like board that's, of that's genius. We had a board of directors. You know what I mean? And uh, that's how we played that card. And it was working. We were donating to the police department. We were donating to churches and different uh, religious aso- associations. On during the holidays, we were donating toys and water and like. All kinds of stuff that people needed, you know, like during the holidays. Yeah, needs. All through weed. And all, people say weed, weed evil, but that's, that's all through weed so, right And there. then, like, like I said, nobody that's even crazy. forced us to do this. We were just making money, you know. So we were like, yo, let's bless people. Might so, as well, yeah. So S- San Bernardino Police Sheriff's Department would take checks from us. We fully clothed them in um, their athletic uh, outfits for their games and stuff. Like we would sponsor them. We would, yeah. Everything was gravy, right? 
one day, this is like a year into a one day, some guy walks in and he's like, let me talk to the boss. Broken English, white collared shirt, Mexican guy, long hair, with a slash across his face. Oh, shit. He comes up to my mom. And my mom's like this little nice lady who wouldn't hurt a fly, you know? She's yeah. a super baller ass businesswoman, but she don't get her hands dirty, bro, you know what I mean? So, this dude is like, yo, you guys are kind of in our territory, you know, and, like, you guys are taking away from our families. Like, you guys have been here for a long time, and, like, we had little gang problems in the neighborhood. We had gangs fighting over who can shop. Which All right, listen in, hip-hop fam. Let's talk Slapwoods, the ultimate tobacco leaf wrap for the culture. You know what's up when it comes to rolling your vibe right? Slapwoods brings that smooth, authentic feel to your smoke game. Elevate your experience, lock in those flavors, and roll with the rhythm of the streets. Don't miss out on Slapwoods. It's more than just a rap. It's a lifestyle. Get slapping with the freshest leaf in the game. Now let's get back to the podcast. This is from the sheriffs. I'm like, what the fuck? We're like down there almost Christmas time, and like the check says void and sends back, right? And we're like, okay, we send another one back void. We're like, what the hell? We had a scheduled drop for a charity fundraiser at a, a church for kids' toys on Christmas. We dropped, the, did the drop. They returned it to us. And the newspaper releases an article, Russian organized crime uses drug money to infiltrate San Francisco <laughs> County, all this crazy shit. I'm like, what the fuck is going on here? Yeah. We've been here for a year. You guys have been taking our money, and now you're saying this shit? Like, wow. what the hell happened? Wow. So, apparently... Because San Bernardino is one of the most corrupted counties in California, because it's a drug corridor between Arizona and Mexico, the county officials, and people know this, are the most corrupt motherfuckers in, in, in the West. Facts. So the gentleman that came by our establishment with those kind words apparently was paying somebody, and when that payment didn't come through, now we have a bullseye on our head. So we went from being the neighborhood hero to zero very quickly. Within a year. Within a year, bro. So wow. they raided us, bro. Oh, That's crazy. <clears throat> they raided us in such a way, bro, that traumatized me and my family for the rest of our lives. Um, I was in Miami at Ultra Music Festival with my boys. My mom was in Palm Springs with my little brother and my grandma. And my stepfather was doing errands around, uh, we lived in Sherman Oaks or some shit like that at the time. And so imagine they hit everybody but me because I'm not here. And I'm 18 years old, bro, right? Yeah, that sucks, yeah. And I have never dealt with anything like this. I don't know anybody that dealt with anything like this. I've only seen shit like this in movies, bro. Right, right, right. So... I'm off one in Miami, bro. I'm in a taxi going from fucking 11 to space. I don't even know what we were doing. We were off it, bro. Limo yeah. full of baddies. You know how it goes, bro. <laughs> from 11 to space. You know what I mean? Like, <laughs> so we, had fake, cool. we had fake IDs. We had tables. We were doing all that shit, bro. So I remember this shit. I remember I get the call. My boy was driving my car, and he was staying in my, in my, in my guest house. I was living with my parents in the guest house and he was staying watching my shit and my dog and um, he calls me he's like yo bro I think somebody's following me I'm like bro are you crazy <laughs> I'm like did you just hit a dab bro what do you mean somebody's following you he's like bro I got off the freeway and this, these dudes are on my ass I turn left they're following me I turn right they're following me I'm like bro you were tripping go home park the car and go in the door and lock the door bro ain't come nobody's coming for you bro what are you talking about and then I'm calling him, and he's not answering. And I'm like, what the fuck? And then I'm, keep in mind, I'm, I'm driving to a club. I'm like, well, okay, what do I do now? I'm like, I'm calling my mom. I'm like, yo, I'm trying to reach her. I'm like, yo, I'm about to tell her, like, yo, this guy's crazy. He just did all this shit. Can you just follow up with him? Mm. Calling her, she's not answering. I'm like, what the hell? And I'm calling my dad. My dad's like, he's like, yo, I think someone's following me. And oh, that's what my heart's saying, bro. Because when I lost reach of him, I already knew what would happen. Yeah. So, and this is my stepfather. 
my biological father lives in a different country. So, and now at this point, I realize what's going on and I stop the party. I get off the freeway. I'm standing on the street at night and I'm trying to call people. I'm calling everybody. I'm trying to figure out what's going on. So I call my biological dad and I'm like, yo, this is what happened and I don't know what to do. I don't got no more money. I, all my clothes is wet from the beach. I was supposed to go home tomorrow and like, I don't know, should I go home? Like my flight's tomorrow and like that's all like, I, I'm, I'm going a taxi straight to the airport. I'm going home. I say that everything's done. Money's gone. And um, my mom pops is a little cuckoo for Cocoa Puffs. And uh, he he's was like, like, come home. He, he was like, he's like, yo, so they coming for you. You got one shot to get the fuck out of there. About like 24 hours. If you got a credit card and you're in a hotel, you go to a Momo, you pay cash. You leave that hotel, they, they're watching you. If, if they got everybody, they're coming for you next. Mm. And that was probably the worst thing he could have told me at 18, because yeah. keep in mind, I don't, I've never done nothing like this in my life, bro. Yeah. I'm, a, I'm a street kid, bro. I'm not no catch me if you can, Leonardo DiCaprio oh, looking yeah. motherfucker, bro, you know? Like, <laughs> you know I'm just giving back. I'm, what you know what fuck? I mean? What's like, what going on? Like, what's going on? Bro? <laughs> I was just, <laughs> <What? laughs> I was just chilling, and now I got to get the fuck out, and I can't go home. So he's like, look. <laughs> He's like, look, this is your game plan, bro. You're going to fly to New York. He was going to cha cha change your flight from L.A. to New York. It's going to be free. Back then, it was free to change the flight. So I changed my flight from, from, uh, from Miami to L.A., from Miami straight to New York. And this is a red-eye flight. And I'm still fucked up, bro. I haven't gone to sleep. I've got my evidences on. My hands are shaking. I'm freezing. You know what I mean? I'm straight out the club. You already know. <laughs> so, and my jaw's like, you know, so, and uh, I get to the airport. And I'm like, yo, I need to change my flight to New York. <laughs> so I hop, I hop on the fucking flight to New York and uh, my grandma meets me there. <coughs> I don't really know her like that. We don't, I'm not really close to my pops at all. You know, shout outs to him for alley ooping me that shit. Cause I don't know where I would be without that whole situation. So grandma washes my clothes feeds me, and I'm on a flight to Paris. My nigga, I already knew. Yeah. <laughs> Out of the country yeah, yeah. we This nigga know. said, I'm not, I'm not Leonardo DiCaprio. Shit, you not, nigga. <laughs> Shout out to bullshit. <laughs> yo, yo. Now I'm talking about, like, I'm, I'm still coming down from Miami in Paris. So, like, I, I started... In, in Miami, and like my calm down ends in Paris, dog. It's crazy. Well, we gotta copyright this script, bro. right? That's what he does. It's a good script. script. To fly to Paris, you don't need a visa. I don't got no fucking visa. I flew from New York to Paris, no visa. Now what? Okay, I'm in Paris. Now what? Pops is like, now you're going to Ukraine. <laughs> you don't need a visa. So uh, I flew to Paris, bro. You gotta be on some other shit to know all of this. Yo, right? dad, he, this nigga, no, no, did, yo, he like, did it yo, before. Yeah, nigga. Yeah, he's yeah, did yeah, it before. Yeah, yeah. I was just yo, like, this yo, this nigga is taking shit. Have you seen that movie, Taking? Yo, I mean, how the fuck do you know this is a loophole in the fucking system? He's like, now you about to know why I wasn't around when you was a kid, man. So I'm going <laughs> to put you on game with what I had to do. He's like, I'm, I'm really a CIA agent, little nigga. <laughs> all right? Yo, so check it. I, I ain't even supposed to be telling you this, all right? Keep in mind, I ain't got Just no go to money. Ukraine. Go to Ukraine. I ain't got no money, bro. I can't do nothing, bro. I got like $200 in my wallet. Like, that's it. And I am... Literally doing this on a whim. I don't really know my pops. I don't really know the situation. I don't know what to do. I haven't talked to my mom. I don't know what the fuck is going on. All I know is that I'm here and here we are. So I made a few judgment, poor judgment decisions because I was inebriated. But I am now in Paris drive, flying to Ukraine and I can't change that, right? So I land in Ukraine and some dude picks me up in the airport and takes me to this crazy hotel, right? It's like, like this old Soviet Union bust down like just old red carpet, like just smells like cigarettes and fish <laughs> hotel, dog, like where you wouldn't find nobody. Nobody who somebody would ever be in this fucking hotel, ever. So he booked me a room for eight days. Why eight days, you may ask? Not because I'm on vacation, but because it's a Russian Easter Orthodox uh, Easter. Everything's closed for eight days. Uh. So I can't even get to him. He's in a different place. I just won't be able to say where. I'm sure you can put the dots together. And um, I was like, I, I, can't, I can't leave 
Like, there's no way I can leave for eight days. And he's like, look, bro, you got to stay in your room or the room service for eight days. <laughs> you have no cell phone. Here's a black and white Nokia that has snake on it. <laughs> right? There's one phone number on here, and that's mine. That's it. There's the driver and my phone number. That's it. You don't leave. You don't open the door. You don't talk to nobody. You're nobody. You don't exist. You order food, and that's it. They leave it at the door. They already told what to do. Boom, boom. <laughs> I'm like, okay, cool. So I'm watching Russian TV for 12 hours a day. I want to kill myself. <laughs> that shit is not funny. Facts. They have no sense of humor. <laughs> like, they are very aggressive people, so all their jokes are very aggressive, and like, Okay, you watch it, you laugh a little bit. You're like, okay, bro, I'm kind of over this shit. Like, <laughs> what am I doing here for 12 hours a day? So, I can't go work out. I can't, there's no, I mean, I can't leave the room. No smoking, no, no nothing. Smoking what? I'm in Russia. <laughs> I'm coming down off of Miami. I can't smoke. Because uh, uh, I'm traumatized. He in there shaking, shaking like a like, motherfucker. Yes, I'm, sir. I'm, I'm like thinking like, yo, these dudes are about to kick the door down, tie me up, and I'm going to be on, you know, in international prison or some shit. I, keep in mind, bro, this is some weed shit. Right. Like, I don't know, bro. I don't know what the fuck is going on. This is crazy. So, finally, I'm, I'm sitting <laughs> in my room. crazy. I'm sitting in my room looking out the window. I'm on like the fifth floor. And in the distance at night, every single night, because I like to do is sit in the window and look at the people and like... You know, shit like that. And, and dream. And dream. So I see the golden arches in the distance. McDonald's? I'm like, yo. I'm like, this fish and this fucking cutlets. <laughs> I'm like, miss me with this shit, bro. I'm from the streets, bro. Yeah. I, I got, I got hoodied up. Double nigga. I got hoodied up at night, bro. And I was like, you know what, bro? Catch me if you can, boy. <laughs> <laughs> I'm going to McDonald's. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> bro, so I, I see you now, bro. <laughs> It was the craziest shit walking down the street at like 11.30 at night knowing I'm really not supposed to do this and that they potentially could just snatch me right off the street because that's what I'm thinking in my head. Put the hoodie on. I'm looking down. I didn't look up once until I hit them golden arches, bro. I got in there. I ordered like like literally $40 worth of shit. I ordered like everything. My chicken, filet of fish, the nuggets, the chocolate shake. I got everything, dog. Yeah. I'm sitting there just fucking going to town and as I'm eating it, looking out the window, I'm like, Oh no, there's a fucking 24 hour internet cafe outside. Oh no. Oh, and I'm, yeah. I'm like, I'm already fucked no. up. I'm already outside, bro. We outside already, bro. <laughs> no. I already stepped out. You feel me? Like, what? what, said, what? Let me check my MySpace. Bro, real quick. bro, 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 bro. On that type of time, dog. <laughs> So I go up in that bitch with my food. I sit down. I log into Facebook. I'm like, boom, 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 boom. <laughs> Articles. Oh, we're all over the news. This shit. Everybody's like, yo, where you been? What the fuck? <laughs> like, do you even know what everybody's saying? Like, dude, what the fuck? You're like, I'm at McDonald's. <laughs> in Russia. <laughs> yo, dog, dog. So check it out. I'm sitting there. And um, I'm sitting in that bitch. And I'm on Facebook talking to one of my best friends at the time. And homie was like, yo, dog, like, it's crazy that you're messaging me right now. It's like, everybody's like looking for you and shit. <laughs> and I'm like, bro, don't trip. I'm safe. We're good. We good, bro. We had the big chicken. So I got all this shit. I, I, I talked to him for like 20, 30 minutes. And I'm like, okay, I got to get back. I, I, ran, I, ran back to, I ran back to the room. I went back to sleep. I woke up and I'm like, okay, now I'm waiting until sundown because we're doing this shit again, baby. Yeah. <laughs> that's, it, that's, it, that's it, bro. That's it. That's it, you know? So I'm now waiting until sundown and come sundown, like eight, nine o'clock. I'm back in my hoodie, yeah. I'm back in that McDonald's, and then I go back onto the computer. Yeah. I hit up my boy on Facebook. My boy's like, yo, bro, we can't be friends no more. Fuck. I'm like, what do you mean? He's like, my parents said I can't be your friend no more. They came to the house with the printouts of our conversation, bro. And they're saying that you're in Serbia. And I'm like, yeah, bro, I'm in Serbia. I'm in Serbia. I'm in an internet cafe with a fucking bouncing VPN that says I'm in Serbia. But I'm like, yeah, bro, that's where I'm at. I'm in Serbia. And then that was it. I never talked to my boy again. That was my best wow. friend, bro. No way. To this day, we haven't spoken. Damn. Yes, sir. Yes, sir. That's crazy. So at that moment, I realized, okay, yo, this shit is like on some other shit. I'm going to go back in there. If my pops finds out I did this and this is going to somehow bounce back at me, he's going to be like, yo, yo, fuck this kid. I told him what to do and he just did that and brought this shit to me. I was thinking like, yo, I'm going to get there. He's going to be like, yo, I don't know this kid. Get the fuck out of here. Send me right back. (laughs) So I'm like, yo, I'm just going to stay in my room and be on my best behavior, dog. Now now shit hit the fan. Like I realized like shit is like 
it's different, right? And um, That's crazy. Eight days go by. I get my paperwork. I don't know how they gave it. They got my paperwork, but I got my visa to go from Ukraine to Russia. And um, I get into Russia. Well, I shouldn't have said that name. But you guys might get monetized. <laughs> <laughs> I already, oh, yeah, bro. So I get I into Russia. We were talking about earlier, too. You're like, you kind of connect the dots. Yeah, no, I, I, just don't, I don't want to burn it because they, you say that name and, like, they, the, other, the other one I said is all, totally already. okay. Ukraine is totally okay. You say, They're on it already. They're like, Russia? What? Yeah, exactly. There's, like, robots listening. Like, ding, 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 ding. Yeah, <laughs> so, yeah. anyways. They're looking over here. They're looking over here. So I get into there. I got my paperwork. I got in there all officially. Everything's official. And I'm with my pops. My pops is a businessman. He works clean. Like, he doesn't do anything wrong, doesn't do anything bad. And he just works all day from 7 a.m., right? He's a businessman. So now I'm, I'm living with him, and he's happy to be around me. You know, he's reconnecting with me in a really horrible situation. You know, he saved my ass. And, um, but I'm there for, like, two, three months, bro. And, like... He's like, yo, bro, you know you can't just move here, right? Yeah. Like, I got a family, and they're, like, looking at me like, bro, like, like. Who's this? Who's this, and why is he sharing, why are we sharing everything with him? Like, I was, you know, it's weird. It's, it was really strange shit, but, you know, shout out to Pops for doing that for me. So I stayed there for, like, two, three months, and uh, then he, he got me a lawyer, and um, he sent me back home. Lawyer picked me up from the airport, made sure that I was safe. And uh, that was pretty much the end of that. Um, my mom and my stepdad did eight months in jail. Uh, they they fucked, you know, they did them dirty, bro. They did my, they put my stepdad in, um, you know, it was like 23 hour lockdown. They didn't give him no sunlight. Like they treated him like an animal for nothing, bro. You know what I mean? And then my mom was in an all women's prison in Glen Helen. Like, in the middle of nowhere in the mountains, bro. Like Crazy. So, and these, these are people that are good, honest, hardworking people. They help everybody around them. They give back to the community. They never ask for shit in return. You know what I mean? That's, that's my family, bro. You know what I mean? They're upstanding citizens in, in, in the city, bro. You know what I mean? Uh, yeah, they had no intentions of doing nothing bad. Nothing bad ever. No, never hurt nobody, never did nobody wrong. You know what I mean? Like, and, and not a lot of people can say that in, in L.A. Everybody does somebody wrong. Yeah. That's just how it goes yeah. out here. My parents are immigrants, so they know what hard work is, and they know, you know your reputation is everything, and that's what they taught me. Yeah, your face card. Your face card is everything. So, you know... So now I'm back in L.A. My parents are out. Well, they're on probation. And, um, and uh, that's when I had to move out. That was, like, that was like when I, not move out, but like that was when like I had to like disassociate myself from them because they were so monitored. And I was like, I was clean and clear pretty much back, in, back at home. Now I got to pay bills, so I got I to gotta stay active and do what I got to do to pay the bills and stuff. So... We separated and like next to the blue hat. So you, you separated. Yeah, I'm sorry. We separated um, from being close to each other, and um, that's kind of when I started extracting because that's all I knew how to do. Now I got this information. I'm back home, and all the eyes are off me. They already took the plea deal. They're already out. They're on probation. That shit is like clean and clear. Is done. So when you came in, you were like. Fighting your shit, huh? I didn't have nothing, bro. Oh, so you were good. They, they took the whole thing on them, took bro. The whole heat. So you're good. Yeah, when they raided us, bro, they arrested 30 of our patients, bro. The cops were literally pulling people that are like, yeah, come on in, we're open, and just putting them in zip ties on the floor, dog. Yeah, sick, sick patients, bro. <clears throat> they fucking hit us um, in three locations. It was the Marijuana Eradication Task Force. It was not even the fucking police department. It was like some third party. Some other shit. Mercenary bullshit, off duty oh, police. Just for weed. What's just for fuck? weed, they didn't fucking, they violated uh, their jurisdiction. They did not get a warrant from LAPD. They came from San Bernardino and kicked in our houses and, like, took all our shit. And then they didn't even secure the house. And then we got robbed for, I, when I came home, I got robbed for everything I owned. Some clucks got in there. They saw what happened. They, bro, they took my colognes, my sneakers, my Xbox, all my rigs, all my, everything I owned. So imagine on top of all this shit that just happened in my life. I now have nothing. I have one pair of shoes and one hoodie. Like, and a bunch of t-shirts and shit, but like, I, I have to start from zero. And so I was like, whatever, bro. 
I'm here. Uh, fuck this shit. It was like a bunch of Artful Dodger and like a bunch of old school clothes that don't even exist no more. Like Jay-Z had a brand called Artful Dodger back in the day. That was, I would spend all my money on that shit trying to look fly. <laughs> <laughs> so, so now I'm, I'm now fully just, you know, blasting. And when they raided us, one of the things they, they found was like I had like a little, you know, setup in my crib for, for blasting, making little hash. Oil. I'm good, bro. Make, making a little hash for myself. So they try to say that we were manufacturing PCP out of marijuana. That was one of the charges that my parents got Whoa. because of that little Whoa. setup I had in my house, bro. With a little 12 cans of butane, a little turkey baster, and a Pyrex dish. Oh, shit. So that charge didn't stick because you can't make fucking synthetic <coughs> shit out of fucking organic compound. That's the dumbest shit you could ever say in court. Yeah. That guy that came into the dispensary that day, bro, was had major pool, bro. That guy oh, for sure. He fucked, he fucked everybody the- over, bro. So that guy, that guy got us, bro. So because we couldn't, because you couldn't, uh, there was no owner of the dispensary. They couldn't shut it down. So they can do all they can do is arrest the the board of directors. They came after the board of directors. Mm-hmm. So in that moment, one of our managers stepped up as the owner because we were all locked up. I was out of the country. The store had to keep going, bro. We had patients. We had volunteers. Like it was a big thing, you know. Thousand people a day, you know what I mean? People's lives depend on this fucking spot to work. And um, just like every other story, bro, the manager fucking jacks us for the store. So now we clean and clear, fixed everything. Store got taken from us, bro. By the manager. By the manager. He changed the paperwork, the power of attorney, did all this shit behind our back. Fucked up a bunch of paperwork, like just finessed the court system, which was super easy to manipulate back then. And, uh, yeah, and we lost the fucking store. That's crazy. Yeah. So, damn. The store is gone. My parents on probation. They froze all of our asses. They tried to take our houses. They tried to t- they took all of our shit. They raided our, the car, blew our safes with C4, took all our money and jewelry. They did, took everything, bro. My, my stepdad bought, uh, built this crazy candy paint chopper, bro, from scratch. He wired it. He got the seats custom made, like, crocodile seats with these like fuck you skeleton kickstands <laughs> like these crazy like this crazy chopper Stacked bro down. and he had the paperwork to prove he built this shit like years before we even had our store that's what's up they jacked us for the fucking bike bro no they sold it at auction but we got it back <laughs> so that's, that's how it is bro they fucking thieves bro the, the, that's the, crazy the, the game the game is really like... The, like you make it and they take it. Yeah, it's 100, 100%, bro. That's what it is. Out here in these streets, you make it and they take it, bro. It's and crazy, huh? Yeah, that's what it is, bro. And the, the, you know, the realer you are, the, the more shit you've been through, you just be like, you know what? That is what it is. I'm you can here. try your hardest to do on the paperwork, make it as legit as possible, and in some way, somehow, there's another paper. Yeah, bro. So, that so, could uh, oversee your shit. This is all, this is all before De La Creme. This it's is all, all before, before the brand. Crime, but bro. this is what makes Della Crim. 100%, and bro. What? A lot of people don't even know this shit. A lot of people <coughs> see me and they're like, oh, he got mommy and daddy's money. You know how many times I hear that shit? That shit is fucking <coughs> funny, yo. If you knew what kind of street gutters I crawled out of, boy, you wouldn't be able to sleep at night. <laughs> <laughs> Motherfuckers telling me I got mommy and daddy's money, bro. He said, I was in Russia for two, three months watching 12 <laughs> hours of Russian TV. Are you? <laughs> No. Out the mud. Tell us something about that. Your brand and the Della Cream and all that too, bro. So that's where it was born, bro. So now, now I have I have to make money, right? Mm-hmm. And I know how to do this one thing. So now, how I am making wax, right? I learned how to do it, but I don't got nowhere to do it. I got everybody watching up my asshole. So keep in mind, I got everybody watching me. So you can't make certain purchases. You can't. I, I can't do nothing. Can't no. do How the fuck am I gonna run a fucking illegal hot dog? <laughs> can't I just do want... shit. Tell us about that brand, Joe. Oh, it's the homie Third Dimensions and Head Melts and Pristine Hash Rolls. Good looking. Oh, Pristine Hash Rolls is my boy, yeah, bro. Yeah, that's Doodle him Bob right there. in the front right Listen, there. Pristine Hash Rolls. Let me tell you, I got a lot of homies in the game, bro. Yeah. If I would recommend anybody for hash rolls, it would only be Pristine. Yeah, we only hash fuck rolls. with Pristine. Yes, sir. Yes, sir. <laughs> Heard it here. You heard it here on his That was all natural. I had no idea. This was third Dimensions, bro. Little sick little design he came with the doodle, Bob. You oh, it's know. fire, Quick bro. It's fire. Yeah, it's pristine hash rolls, though. They, they come in clutch, bro. Yes, sir. Yes, sir. Let's get to that. So. De la crema. But hold up. Before, so now we know where de la crema, the soil that it, yeah. that it rolls from. 
And before you that tell organic us, living soil. That organic living soil. Before, organic living before soil. Before we come out of the out of the ground and we hear more about the story, I want to f- cut and fast forward off some Tarantino shit, and I want to go to the end. What the fuck? What where do these awards come from? Like what's okay, going on? Okay, so uh, we got best tasting uh, concentrate of nothing but fire. I'm gonna try some of these gummies too. And then we got. Uh, um, uh, best tasting, uh, so yeah, we got best tasting gummies and best tasting uh, overall terpenes from the year before that. So for our hash raws, and we entered the garlic mimosa, um, and that's what we won with. And then uh, we won with our uh, handmade um, gourmet edibles that are vegan with the um, for this award. Oh, oh, yeah. Fire, this fire. Fire. I just seen those awards, bro. I had to ask. I'm for like, sure, for sure. This one was so a little award from back in the day. Nothing, nothing. This for crazy. the gummies too, though. You guys got the award for the gummies. Yeah, yeah we got one know. award for the gummies and one yeah. award for the. We actually got two awards for the gummies. We just we're still waiting for one in the mail. So I'm about to eat one of the award winning gummies right now. I can't. Open. Yeah, they're all vegan, handmade. We import our flavors from wow, Europe. I can't wait to, I'm gonna eat two. You said two's cool. Wait, right? say that again. You 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 guys import all your what for what? Our our flavoring is imported. I'm just gonna give everybody the sauce because that's what we do at Della Creme. We share. Mm-hmm. Oh, I like that. Sunkissed Europe for all you edible makers and you're looking for your for your uh, flavoring. Look up if you're going to shop at Sunkissed. Make sure you go to Europe. The European flavors they be hitting on a different level. Sunkissed mm. Europe. Okay, yeah. some sauce for y'all. Yeah. Some sauce for y'all. Something. Free game. There's free game. One. Oh, here we go. We are gonna try this. You didn't want one? Free game. Free oh, game. Damn, there's only. Tss. I guess we all just try one. What flavor is this? Pineapple, <coughs> pineapple strawberry. So I created with uh, with my team. Wow. All the flavors. It's mm. a different texture also. It's not a gelatin base. It's a pectin base. So it has a it different... It tastes so good. It's like a marmalade instead of a gummy. Every, everybody everybody should take one on the podcast. I, I, I can't, bro. If I eat that shit, I'm going to fucking start... I, I, I want to take another dab. I can't... <laughs> that, that shit's hit me way too hard, bro. Take another bro, dab. Got a dab over there. What kind okay. of dab? I get a dab. Yeah, yeah show, I got bro. you. We want to see a cloud of smoke. Oh, yo, how that how long did delicious. it take? Man, we want to see a cloud of smoke. I need to see that shit. Yo, hey, that, that tastes shit was, really good. That tastes better than just regular... Regular candy. So She's good. Like, I already know what they do, bro. Good so luck. Good. How long did it take for you to like you want get one? your um, right, perfection good, on? They, they both just turned it down. I'm not about to eat another one of them motherfuckers. <laughs> did you see how they both said, you, said, you said you got the two. Nigga, they two looked, to be on another level, bro, right? They looked at us like, Here, they took it. Oh, shit. <laughs> they took it. No good, gang. You no. want me to take another one? Full spectrum. You said two, right? Two should be. Let's turn the lights on, too. Full spectrum body high, bro. You about to feel Yo, good. Yo, I see the whole hash hole in the I middle. Do. Wow, that looks so cool. Look. Yeah, he oh, specializes yeah. on that. He loves to make him OCD perfect like that. Wow. Yeah, yeah. that's how that's. Yep. That's perfect. the hash hole. So, that's how the other one that I wrote too. That shit. You gotta be. You gotta know how to Yo, bro. It. So, I want to keep hearing this story, bro. Now that we're out of the soil, and, and and you're making the you're making the the the, the hash oil. You're not really putting nothing on your name because everybody's on your. Watching me, yeah, yeah. So. I couldn't do it at my house, right? I was living in a little apartment. I tried blasting in the apartment. I blew up twice. I almost no. set the building on fire. You blew Shit. up twice, dude. Yeah, yeah. I was blasting in the bathroom, bro. Not the good idea with the air conditioning units on the third floor. So I would fan all the fumes out the so window. So all hot in there and shit? Oh, bro. I would get high as fuck. I didn't have a mask. I would be like all dizzy and shit off the butane, bro. <laughs> So I, I I didn't know what the fuck I was doing, bro. I was trying to figure it out. Straight blasting it, huh? Yeah, I bro. tried it out one time. It's breaking bad. When I, when, when, now when I tried it out and I said, nah, bro, if you could blow you, I was like, I'm probably going to blow myself up. I'm good. I blew up a couple times, bro. But thank God, thankfully, I didn't lose more than but a couple At least you know what you were hairs. doing. You Now you know what you're doing. Hey, yo, bro, for the most part, you got some good ass guardian angels. I think I would never figure it out. Sure, bro. You got oh, the God, best God. Go- I tell this to my mom on the daily. Somebody up there like me, you know, and I try to give back and protect tenfold, bro. Facts. Tenfold I give back, bro. Facts. Anybody around me know what kind of person I am, bro. If you on my team or you around me, bro, if I make it, you make it. If I'm up, you up. There is no I'm up, you down. It doesn't work with me, bro. Nobody oh, yeah. in my circle is like that. Everybody win and ask about me. If I so, eat, we all eat. 100%. Fire, bro. Yeah, that was our am- col- collab with Ati Hash we did for Legends of Hashish, bro. Yeah, we need a dab of that, bro. Yeah, I could just imagine you. if it tastes like that. Oh my god. I got you, bro. Not just that. Talk about that collab that you did that sold out before you even dropped oh, it. Oh yeah, the super dope collab. Oh, let's see that. Yeah, that's super so, dope. Yeah, so at the end of the day, bro, it's like Super Dope is one of the biggest uh, street brands. You know, everybody in the streets is going crazy for Super Dope, for Tenco, all these big brands. And uh, shout out to the people at Superdope. You know, they do some incredible work. And 
they saw my vision and they blessed me with some of their amazing Is indoor material. Yes, see. sir. Amazing indoor material. And I was one of the only people that was blessed to be able to process some of their indoor fresh frozen. And that's bubble the poppers. the bubblegum poppers. That was one of my favorite strains um, that that we processed. Tell me what you think of this uh, fresh flower from Space Packs. Shout out. Uh, Holy moly, what the hell? Yeah, that's G Money. That's Space Packs. What's the cross on this? Uh, D DJ could tell you a little bit more, but uh, it's it's uh, minty lime. Like, mm -hmm. like that straight gassy, like that, runcy. I don't even know how to explain it. How did that, that's like some sour, like <laughs> this, bro? I'll roll that up right now. This, that's my boy. That's bro, my boy G Money from Space. Is this space, space, Keith? No, there's no way. No way. No. That's Look that's how it goes. That's just, that's just how it is. What the fuck? That's the way it grows. Shout out to Grant from uh, Grant's Space killing Packs. It. That one's called Space Candy. Oh. There's also another one called Astro Tech. So this needs to be turned into some fucking hash, bro. It's time for you. It's time for you and and, and Grant bro, to talk. Hey, you gotta have that conversation. My fingers are sticking. Bro, that's the main reason. I, I, that's how I the collabs to, happen, right? Hey, yeah. I think we just birthed a collab right here. Well, I'll make. We'll, we'll make sure to give you his information. Yeah, I gotta put my hands in the fucking alcohol. My shit is like sticking together, like I just touched some glue. Shout out candy. G Money. This is Space Candy. If Woo! you can get your hands on it, make sure to get it. It's hitting all stores. Go uh, cookies. Everything is going official this week. I'm in cookies too. I'm in cookies. Artistry lemonade. We're in a bunch of major retailers. Love Go on our website, www.delacreme.la. Yo, I love your website when you look at the price, the way it just pops up. Yes, sir. You That's kind of cool. <coughs> Thank you, bro. Appreciate My boy you. put me on game with that today while I was driving. I was like, oh, I'm going to tell that nigga about that. I like that. I appreciate you, bro. I, really, I ain't really seen that on any other Never. website. I was like, I was hold player. the fuck. Yeah, we got, we got good people on our team. They, you know, the... The IT department, they really throw down all of our graphic design. Shout out to Isaac. You know, he holds us down. He makes some most of this artwork. And um, shout out I, Danny over here. Without him, I wouldn't be able to make this amazing product for the people. Shout out Danny. Give it up for Danny, 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 man. Get up for Danny. Shout out to Danny. Danny. Oh, yeah. Yes, Yo, sir. You got to come take a dab. Hey, let Danny take a dab. I got you, bro. <laughs> Danny. 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 Trippy boys. Get that, Trippy boys. boys. Hey, yo, talk about that relationship. Uh, how did you, you and Danny meet? How long, how long have you guys been working together? Bro, believe it or not, we met on the fucking IG, bro. That's wow. crazy. A lot of Here's relationships are like that. So he was in Houston. He would follow my page from the very beginning. And we were always staying in contact. You know, he's Russian and I'm Russian. So we just, we connected like that. And then when he moved out here, like literally the day he moved out here, he's like, yo, bro, pull up on me. I'm right here. I pulled up, gave him some rosin, and then, you know, that was it. Yeah, that was it. <laughs> that was it. Yo, sh shout out, shout out to. <laughs> yo, I heard that. Yo, Connect the dots, he said. Yeah. Hey, that's true. Hey, shout out to DJ, our producer. Hey, he just said that um, your dad <coughs> sent 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 your boy Danny out here to protect <laughs> you. No, no, my dad, my dad definitely ain't some send nobody nowhere. You sure your dad's not CIA and Danny's a CIA agent? Just you know, no, he's no, kind of no, buff, no. man. Danny's kind of buff, yeah. dude. <laughs> <laughs> that's years of training. Danny's a teddy bear, bro. This guy is the biggest. Hey, biggest some of the best CIA agents make you think that. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> hey, bro, man. Fuck <laughs> 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 yeah, I, 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 yeah, never mind, never mind. Never mind, never mind. He's not CIA. He's not CIA. He's not CIA. We good. We good. We good. That shit was funny as fuck. Yo, <laughs> man, this is this is this is epic, bro. Um, super glad to be sitting here with you, learning about hash, learning about the culture, learning about your brand, and 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 really some of the some of the stuff that you've uh, been through. Uh, yeah, bro, it's it's crazy to say some of this shit out loud because like I'll be sitting there. This is years later, bro. I'm like, yo, that shit really did happen, though. Like, you know, people gotta hear it. I don't want to fucking just brush it under the carpet like any other person would. Like, yo. Like, do you understand what I had to go through to be sitting right here? Nobody else could say that they went through this shit. And I didn't make none of this up. I could back all of it up, bro. Fact. You know what I mean? There's, you know, there's nothing made up. You can't, you can't even make, make that up, up bro. You, you got to be a creative up. motherfucker. I'd be on no, Netflix if I was no, making no. shit up like that, you know? Yo, and so while you're building this, the business with um, De La Cream, you also have the Million Dollar Lux. So Tell us about that. That was actually my mom's pivotal point where my mom rebirthed herself from the ashes mm. she was you know working and volunteering at a food bank mm. she was doing that then she started managing the food bank then she owned the food bank then she made some money got herself out of this bad situation and started doing property rentals and her niche is client relations and and, and doing things incredibly nit nitpicked like 
perfectly for oh, yeah. consumers, right? So mm. she's all about the delivery, right? Mm. So in her business, there's a lot of competitors in the rental property business. You can go on Airbnb, you can go VRBO, but the elite, they don't want to just rent a house. They want to rent a house that nobody else could rent. They want to rent a house that has 24-hour concierge customer service. They want a, a fully stocked house, fully furnished house, with not just some furniture, but the best furniture. They don't want to just stay in a house. They want to stay in the house, right? Mm -hmm. So over time, my mom, she just kind of climbed her way up, and she's like, yo, I'm not going to rent these, like, B and C homes. I'm going to figure out how to just rent the... The, 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 high the, end. The, the homes that you can't even get an appointment to go look at. Yeah. So she had a lot of friends and she just worked her way up and did hard work. I remember she would work fucking 16, 17 hours a day. They still do. They still work a lot, bro. For, for you know, they work nonstop. It's always customers coming in, always got to cater to these people, cater to these people. So it's because she cares about the people, the product. The, still, exactly. never, the way she never gave feel. up on it. Never gave up the hustle. My mom is a fucking hustler, bro. That's where I get it from. I get it from my mama all day. God bless and, her, uh, man. Shout out to your moms, up, man. Straight up. You know, so um, her and my stepdad make an incredible team. And, you know, they... Shout out to your stepdad to still stick with her after... You uh, in this situation yeah, and yeah. I have a everything brother, they went through. Little sister so, with them, so it's like we're a family. You know, they 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 definitely we got each other's backs and shit. Like nah, no matter what, hell yeah, so, that's very important, bro. So my mom, I love that about you and and your story. Very family orientated. You, you your family and you took the risk together. Usually, you know us. Our family ain't with the we shit or none of this, so we can't even bring this type of conversation to them. So we got to go. Was they. They, were, they were against this shit. My mom would drug test me, bro. I was getting drug tested <laughs> until I was 16 years old. My mom was never. Yo, my mom used to drug test me too, bro. That's funny you say that. Yeah. My mom would be like, yo, guess where we're going today? I'm like, where? Pull up. <laughs> nah, nah, nah. She would give me them little piss cups. Nah, oh. oh, bro. I was finessing. Bro, I was getting into dispensaries. I could finesse this little piss cup, bro. bro I would go into the bathroom, peel the lid, take a brown Sharpie, draw negative, close it back <laughs> up. Here you go, mama. We chilling, bro. <laughs> we chilling. I'm in the kitchen two in the morning, munchied out red eyes. She comes, <laughs> she comes in and she just drug tested me. <laughs> she's like, what? And she's yeah. like, what the <laughs> fuck are you doing? How did you just... <laughs> she's like, there's no way. <laughs> You're like, mama, this is me this is how i is that's what i did i was like look i could either do it what you know it i could do it behind your back it's up to you mm -hmm. and pretty much she just kind of was like you know what as long as you don't fuck around do other shit and you're honest with me like do what you do do you shout out to your mom you know what i mean because i had homies ODing on fucking oxys yeah. and just shit, you know yeah. I mean? like so i, I was I'm the same age as you, so yeah, yeah. That, around that time. And we know a lot of the same people, bro. We grew up, and me and you grew up together, bro. Uh, we, we know a lot of the same Valley kids together, bro. You know what I mean? We have to. Have to. Yeah, so anyway, so so now I'm evolving and making concentrates, right? So I'm making concentrates in my apartment. I'm doing my thing. I don't have any equipment. I just got the, the, the weed. I got the butane. I got the tube. I blasted it. Put it on the pot, put it in hot water, bubbled it down, and then I just take it and start whipping it on the hot pad. I whip it, whip it, whip it, turn it into some nice ass yellow blonde crumble until it's dry and crumbly. Scra <laughs> scrape that shit off, bro. Hit it, whip it, scrape it, package it up, and boom, off it goes. Wow. Whip it, whip it, whip it. So, I mean, I'm, that's all I would do. I, I, I would sit there and whip all day. Whip, whip, whip. That was my rent. Whip, whip, whip. There's my rent. Whip, whip, whip. And that's, I didn't even have a brand, bro. I didn't have a brand. I was just packaging my little Tupperwares and going to this hash lounge. Anywhere where there was people sitting and dabbing, I'd be like, yo, try this. 600 a zip. Boom. Here you go. Boom. 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 Going all around anywhere where I could sell it, was it, the wave right there, too. Prop 215 era, bro. There was no rules. You just walking off the street with whatever you had, bro. That's crazy. Man, those days were beautiful, bro. Yeah, That's boy. That's when I first got into selling like at a big number. They'd be sure. like, yo, Ernesto, you, you, you're charismatic. Here, walk in with this to this store. If, you, if, if they buy it, I'll give you 2,000 bucks. Yeah, bro. My, what? My, my boy was like that, too. The fool from that's, Reading. That's how it was. That, Raul used to do that shit to me, bro. Yeah. He'll have me go to, into like... I'm probably like 17. I'll go to like 10 dispensaries. Oh, down Ventura Boulevard. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. I'm on, bro. Yeah, that, end it. Bro, by the time we get to the I'm end, I'm thousand bucks. Out. Thousand bucks. Easy. Oh. 10 pounds, thousand bucks. Easy. Like, I'll be like, again, again in two days. He's like, mm-hmm. Yeah, exactly. <laughs> exactly now to fast forward and think, 
I still know this guy to this day. I'd be like, bro, you've been playing me since I was a fucking kid. Because he always trying to slide a, sl- a slick one on us, bro. That was funny. He's a funny motherfucker, man. But shout out know. to him. But shout out to those days, bro. Prop 12 days, bro. Where it was just so fun. It was really La La Land out here. That's yeah. why I really like your story about... Um, Cause I'm supposed them. Remember that? That's I'm supposed them. The valley. That's where you had to go to the doctor to get like what's it called? I would go on Melrose. I would go to. Uh, oh, yeah, that was the other. Uh, spot on Melrose, too. there was a bunch of spots. I would go there. Doctor Patel or some shit like yeah, that. Yeah, yeah, yep. The girl, the Indian girl. So she was the biggest fucking. They would just write them. No, no questions asked. Boom, boom, boom. She was. You want a medical card? Here you go. That's what it was. Oh, no, you need a medical card. Mine's, so, mine's was on Western and Vernon. Shout out the niggas on Western and Vernon. <laughs> so, it was up. so at the end of the day, bro. I was like, okay, so now I got a, I, I got a little motion. I got a little stores I'm trying not- to, I got stores trying to order more. They're like, yo, how can we get a little more? How can we get a little more? And I don't even make that much. I only get a little bit of trim. I got a little bit of this. You need a material. At this point, you you need you that st- material. You're still just doing it off from your apartment, from your crib. Exactly. Just hustling. Just hustling little batches, right? Respect, bro. So now I'm like, okay, okay, I got, I got this little motion. I got to find a place where I could do this shit at, right? right. And my, one of my neighbors was uh, this young, younger homie, and uh, he was just always in the neighborhood. I live in an apartment building. So homie was always at the, at the slicker store ro- uh, trying to have somebody buy him blunts or whatever. He's always standing outside. So we start, we start talking, right? We start yeah. talking, and you know, he's, he ends up being a really cool kid. I know him from the neighborhood, and, and then he's like, yo, bro, he's like, I got a place for you to do that shit, dog. Mm. He's like, I know this kid who lives in the mountains in the hills, right in front of the Hollywood sign. His parents are super loaded. <laughs> Mansion, dog. Like, they got a guest house. Yeah. I'm like, tell me what? more. I'm like, tell me more. He's like, all he wants is $250. Huh? You can do it there. 250 bucks? That's at that time they were little kids. We were like 13, 15 years old, bro. I was I I I was I'm sorry, bro. I was I was 18 and these kids were like 15, 16. I ain't gonna lie, bro. That's they, they made it. the offer. I was like, I, I, I was that guy that fucking that predator, I guess you can call me, bro. At that time, I was about the fucking shark. <laughs> I was like, you want 250, bro? I got you, bro. No problem. And I was like, I got you on 50 bucks every tube, so you could blast for me. I don't even have to do nothing, bro. Yeah. I taught him how to do it. I would come to their house, give him 250 to use the house, give both of them 50 dollars each per tube. I would give them other material. I taught them how to do it. These dudes would just sit there running. I would sleep, dab, whatever. <laughs> and I'm, da- I'm doing this in like a $20 million house facing the Hollywood sign with a fucking lake in my backyard, bro. Yeah. So we were doing this shit. It's a true story, bro, for a very, very long time. So I would blast it at this kid's house from like, we would have to do this at 1130 at night when his parents would go to sleep. And we would blast from 1130 until 6 a.m., dog. I would fall asleep every time. I never made it. These kids were workaholics, bro. They did it to the very end. They finished it. Would wake me up. I would take this shit, put them the par- parchment paper with the oil that was unpurged. Put it in the oven. I didn't have an oven. Oh what shit! Oven? <laughs> what oven? What oven? That's crazy. I'll tell you where the oven was, though. <laughs> oven was in Marina Del Rey. I'm in Hollywood <laughs> Hills. That's right? crazy. Homie's parents are about to wake up to go to work. I come with all my empty shoe boxes and every fucking tray that we just blasted and purged all the gas out, I gotta take this slab and take it to an oven to purge it now. So I'm putting the paper in the shoe box and stacking the shoe boxes, like 10, 15 shoe boxes of just slabs. Yeah. And now I gotta drive this shit <laughs> to Marina Del Rey, dog. Before it melts. It's, it's off gas and butane. This car smells like butane, bro. There's no hiding it, dog. So I'm in the car driving 6 a.m. Oh, to Marina Del Rey while my boy is waking up to go to work. So he's like, you can only bring it at 7 a.m. If you're not here at 7 a.m., I'm gonna go to work and you're gonna catch me later. <laughs> so I would be there waiting for him to come downstairs. He would take the shoe boxes, go upstairs, cut them up, put them in his oven, turn the oven on, and go to fucking work. I would go home to sleep. By the time I would wake up, he would be back from work. My slabs are ready. $200. <laughs> yeah. so I got to pay homie $200 to use his oven every time. Boom, that's another $200. Yeah. So sorry. now I got a little operation going, right? Oh, and I'm stacking my slabs, <laughs> bro. <laughs> stacking yeah. my slabs. That's cool. that's cool that you put them in the shoe box. I hope you used to put them in the pizza box. Yeah, my slabs. <laughs> before they were solid, they were still wet and goopy. Yeah. So it had to be like so there nothing would touch it, right? So I put them like a little boat into the shoebox. Yeah. And it would stay like in the little parchment. I feel I feel you just to keep it right yeah, there. Yeah, exactly. You know, that's so, why a lot of shit come out more fire when there's a struggle behind oh, it. Oh, for sure, bro. 
So it gives a character. <laughs> the homie that would actually use uh, that whose oven I would use is actually in the game now too. He got licensed. You know, shout out Zugatti. You yeah, know yeah, what I mean? Shout out Zugatti. You know, if it wasn't for Zugatti, I wouldn't be able to do what I'm doing. You know what I mean? Everybody Zugatti. played a little story. You know, shout out that house that I was blasting at, Rare Backwoods, <laughs> LA. You know what I mean? Where are those two Bro, kids at? Where are those two 11 kids at? 11 o'clock to 6 in the morning, youngster, man. You know, I wonder if they up. have their own brand and shit. You know, they, 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 yo, they I know they was having fun. <laughs> I just said, bro, Rare Backwoods, to. LA. Oh, the, oh, shit. That's what's up. Yeah, bro. Shout out to Rare Backwoods. <laughs> oh, yeah. yo. You know what I mean? Yo. <laughs> At the end of the day, bro, everybody in my story is an OG right now. They all put in that work. That's everybody crazy. evolved. That's funny, huh? I was like, do you have crazy. to have brands now, bro? Everybody <laughs> evolved into a beast, bro. Shout out all the people that helped me along the way, bro. Right now, some of these people surpassed me in doing 10 times bigger things than me, you know what I mean? And I'm never going to say nothing, bro. Everybody came from that same thing I came from. We all did that same struggle shit. And, you know, some people got... Better situations, some people got worse situations, but we all here. We still today, we're relevant, and we got motion, and God bless, you know, this opportunity, because a lot of people fail in this shit, and they get, their lives are ruined, you know, in the weed business. They get arrested, they get robbed, killed, whatever, bro, you know, we've been moving around from a young age in this shit, you know, through all the trials and tribulations, you know, made us what we are today, so... You know, the streets of L.A. ain't for everybody. I'll tell you that. You got to know your, you know how, you got to know how to play this game, bro. You got to know how to move out here. Yeah, they'll eat you real quick, bro. You know what I mean? This ain't for sucker shit, bro. All these out-of-towners coming here thinking they got a Swede because they got money, bro. You, you come into, a, a, into the coyote den, into the wolf den, bro. <laughs> there are wolves all around here, bro, howling, just waiting for even, your ass. You don't, don't even know where they are. They, 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 they pull up. They hungry, they too. They hungry, bro. It's, it's holidays, bro. Their kids <laughs> want a PS6, PS7. <laughs> I want that new <laughs> shit. Your baby real. mama want that new Gucci. <laughs> they, you want that. they coming for your ass, boy. You can't <laughs> believe it, bro. Oh. There you go, bro. Speaking of you other know. brands, what's a what's a uh, dream collaboration you want to fuck with? Who would you want to fuck with? Fuck, bro. You know what? I don't really. Uh, I, you don't. I, I, it's, it's not. It just happens. Like, it just, like, it, all the big dogs. Like, for instance, like Oxy Farms, right? The guy I did the collab yeah. with. That was my idol going into this shit. One of the people that I looked up to as far as making hash was Oxy Hash, Oxy Farms. Shout out that team. They do some of the most incredible work, and I would pay a hundred dollars a gram for a boy's work mm. to smoke it. Mm. That would be the best shit I ever smoked. Mm. Every time, every okay. place I would go, the most attention, the detail, like you're just on another level of quality. Mm. And I'm doing collabs with him and washing with him now. You know what I mean? That's what's up. Super dope. I never thought I would be washing with them. They fuck with me heavy. You know what I mean? Black Leaf, they fuck with me heavy. Everybody that we done collabs with, Truffles, fucks with me heavy. Mm. You know good. what I mean? So I, we're not just doing collabs, we're doing collabs. I, I have a question. What is an elite Terp society? Elite Terp Society was just kind of like my, um, uh, I guess, my page before um, Delacreme. So, like, Delacreme got licensed, and I try to kind of separate the legal aspect of my brand once we got licensed. Because we came from the trap. I ain't got nothing to hide. So, find. Elite Terp, you, like, keep it still with you. Even yeah. Throughout the Delacreme. Exactly. So, so, we got licensed under social equity. And what that means is we had to prove... To a, um, to the to the to the county that we were in business prior to 2015 with two pre-ICO dispensaries, and what that means is we had to have a written paper signed and dated from an actual active dispensary that is licensed and legal prop, uh, uh, prop 215. Yeah. Um, that was buying my product for me illegally. So keep in mind, that's not a paper that everybody would sign. Yeah. Right. Right. So you needed two of them. I needed two of them. Huh. Luckily, I had a homie that had two pre ICO stores that I was worth selling to. He <laughs> said, <laughs> <laughs> luckily. Uh. <laughs> it's not what you know, it's who you know. Yeah. You know, so. So at the time, homie did that shit like it was nothing. He didn't even really charge me for it. <laughs> that's what's up. He was like, boom, 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 you, here bro, you go. Yeah, and then nah, that's what's up. So Elite yeah. Terp Society and Della Cream is basically within its both. Same like shit, bro. And then, um, so Elite Terp Society is kind of like my 
community identity. Yeah, right? I get mm-hmm. you. That's because like, we represent the elite Terps in our society. Yeah. We don't just fuck with basic shit. Our blends and our strains and everybody that we collab with is on the upper echelon. The motherfuckers that you got to like really court mm-hmm. to in order to even be able to talk to. They don't yes. even care how much money you got. You know, money is nothing. You got to know people in the you gotta, game. You got to know you got to have skin in this shit to be able to even talk to these people. So mm-hmm. that's what elite Terp society represents. It that's represents the community around that, right? And then De- the brand is the De- 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 Creme is the brand. That's the the, the, the legacy brand that made oh, it out the okay. rubble, out of the ashes. Hell yeah. You know what I mean? So we got licensed under social equity because of the fact that we got raided. Because of all that shit that I went through, that's what qualified me to yeah. get my license. Wow. That's Damn. crazy. It was like you had to go I through I had it. to go through that to, to get here. It. So that's why I was like, I'm never going to not tell the story, no matter how anybody wants to play it. This story needs to be told. You know what I mean? So like, a lot of legacy is, people and people in the is it? In, in, in these elite <laughs> situations are people that had to take that L. Like uh, Chris Ball from Ball Family Farm. Of course, bro. Legend like, in the game, bro. Like, bro, he tells you the story. Yeah, bro, I was walking up the elevator and people that just looked like normal niggas in the lobby all turned out to be FBI. And he, like, he, he has that's no shame. Real, that's some real shit, bro. It's no, shame, no, no shame in, in the story, like you said, yeah. because be, without that is. story, you wouldn't even be eligible for the licenses exactly, and the situations exactly, you have now. Bro. They know what they did, bro. Those motherfuckers are so crazy. Listen, they let me in, bro. Yeah, they let you <laughs> in. Talk, yeah, talk about this uh, event you're having uh, this weekend, too. Well, that's another thing. Because of my grassroots in this shit, because of my authority and my reputation in the streets, people somewhat give me you know, so respect lit. when it comes to you know, making decisions on what's good and what's bad. People trust my... my my decision making, they know that I know what I'm talking about, right? So because of that factor, I've been able to, you know, have a small community of like-minded individuals always be around me. I call it the 1% of the cannabis community. Yes, sir. And what that means, it's all the biggest brands, all the store owners, Mm. all the big people that are doing business behind the scenes, Mm. you know what I mean? The people that are actually the the threading of this shit, Mm. you know what I mean? Talk that shit. Keep going, bro. So all these people and in this community, they want something to do. They want to spend their hard-earned money, and they want to do it in a way that nobody else can, right? They want to feel special doing it. So I created a social club mm. around that whole community and that whole business model of creating a luxury um, event and a luxury um, social club that's just catering to the people, the people that actually make this community, not the Chads and Brads, you know, doing yeah. the corporate shit. I'm talking about the people that were in the streets with me, you know, really doing it. And like, this isn't an open club. This isn't an open invitation. It's the Sterling it's the Social Sterling Club. Social right? club. Okay. I got my partner, Let's Smoke Hash. You know, me and him will be able to put this thing together and bring it to light. This is all in my imagination. I thought of this shit. And um, we were doing it back then, a few years ago, with, the, with other brands. We were getting together at Mastro's in Newport Beach, and I convinced them to let us smoke dabs in the restaurant during <laughs> business hours. That's different. 40 That's of different. us. <laughs> uh, we celebrated Black Leaf's, I think, 40th birthday there. And yeah, that's had, what's up. We had all the biggest brands there. At the, at the time, we all got exotic cars. We did a supercar rally from here to Newport Beach, and uh, we... We mobbed around. We got an Airbnb. We chilled at the beach. We did this whole event. And it was just like small shit. It was like 15 people, just homies. We didn't make no money off of it. Everybody just threw down their own thing. And we just made a day event out of it, right? Fire. So Vibe. this was like five, six years ago. And um, push comes to shove, you know, um, everybody really liked that shit. And now that was a little bit before its time. Now that I'm in the space that I'm in now, I brought it back. And I... You know, I brought my partner into this, and I, I, I told him my vision, and he's extremely, um, you know, talented in what he does. He's a visionary as well, and us together have been able to put this beautiful thing together for the community. <coughs> and, um, you know, what it started off was um, we would, you know, congregate around fancy restaurants and do the same thing. We would smoke at restaurants where you could never smoke. 
Yeah, right? that's dope. Right. So that's sick as fuck. If Make you guys follow me on Instagram, you'll know which restaurants that is. I can't really put them on blast like that because we under contract. But you go on our page, you'll see everything clean and clear. Sterling Social Club, and mm. on Instagram. So it's a Michelin star Japanese steakhouse in downtown LA, right? Jeez. In a, one of the most affluent hotels in downtown LA. So they let 70 of us bring our rigs in and have a 20 course Wagyu tasting dinner what? all while we were dabbing. And I'm talking about the elite. <laughs> Oh, that's $10,000 rigs. Everybody got buzz downs. You know, I mean, like, we got Can't make that shit up. armed security at the door. Like, you know, we sold more cocktails that night from to our group than they did the whole day. So we were popping bottles in the restaurant. Because that's my, my people ain't coming no regular shit. You know, when you, you see them boys throwing them 10, 20 racks at the club, bro, imagine you put them boys in a restaurant, bro. <laughs> so. That, that's the kind of oh, people yeah. that come to my events, bro. Everybody, somebody. <laughs> so that's the what, what event we talked with the Winter Hash Ball? No, no, no. Winter Hash Ball is something. No, he was talking about some, I'm talking about like the... Other sh- so Sterling Social Club... Is another... Is the, the whole thing of Sterling Social Club is yeah. that we our experiences are day experiences surrounded around food. Oh, okay. So the day starts off at a brunch restaurant in Beverly Hills. We have videos... You of guys all link up and just smoke gas up in there. On Rodeo. <laughs> Okay? The only time it's ever been done is when we did it, bro. Yeah. That's it. You can come in there and roll a joint and smoke it by yourself and maybe get kicked out, maybe not. But when you bring 70 people with blowtorches and rigs That's on crazy. a Saturday brunch on Rodeo on a sunny day, you got little kids with grandmas and grandpas, and we got blowtorches and motherships, bro. Show me who else doing that. That's, oh, mo- that's, that's motion. Right. Okay? <laughs> grandma, grandma, that's what's motion. that? What is he doing? It was that, straight that's torch. That's the kind of shit we want, bro. Torch that shit up, eating yeah, the fucking you know, Wagyu. Ling- linguini with the Wagyu with the Ooh. <laughs> <laughs> That's hilarious. That's so funny, guys. So we, we, did, we did the curated uh, brunch where, you know, everybody brought their rig. And we had uh, rosin that we gave out with every meal. And we had drinks. And then Fire. as we were done eating, we had... 15 or maybe 20 supercars delivered to the back of the restaurant for my guests so that we can all immediately afterwards, our cars are valeted already at the restaurant, and it's 24-hour valet. So I talk to them, we good. The car rental people pull up and line them bitches up, bro. And after we're done eating, we wipe our mouths, we leave our tips, and we hop in, and we go on a supercar rally from Beverly Hills, like 20 people deep, all the way to Malibu to a smoke spot. We get to Malibu. We all pull up into the parking lot, bro. And you imagine it's a car show now. Yeah. We got everybody running from everywhere. We got drones recording this. Everybody's in Louis and drip and diamonds and chains. Yeah. And cars. Like, people don't understand what's going on. They really don't get it. They're like, who the fuck are these people? And they're just out there taking dabs. <laughs> are we just standing there taking dabs, bro? That's hilarious. That's, that's wild, bro. We, bro. We, we, <laughs> so, the so, we got people running up like, yo, what do you guys do? Can we follow you and record all this? I'm like, you better not follow us and record us, bro. Like, what the fuck? <laughs> so we, we hopped in the car, and everybody's done smoking, and now we pull up to the property rental. Airbnb. Oh, your mom's spot. Oh. Mom's thrown down, Big bro. Big bong. You know, in their Lux. So, you know, if Million Dollar Lux, shout out for the sponsorship. You know what I mean? If it wasn't for that, our, these beautiful homes would not exist. Because we can go on Airbnb and rent the house. That ain't a problem. We'll drop a bag. Airbnb going to kick you out in 30 seconds. Because yeah. it's a scam. Every business in LA is a scam. You rent the house in Airbnb, you have more than the people allowed in there. Guess what? You they get kicked out. Security small. deposit is going to get taken. And you have to get kicked out right away. It's a scam. You lose your money. It's a scam. It's a scam, bro. You can't throw a party in Airbnb. Yeah. It's not happening, bro. People think they're smart and they do all this sneaky shit. Airbnb have a Wi-Fi's that count how many motherfuckers are on them bitches. And you're in the hills, there's no service. Everybody, what's the Wi-Fi? What's the Wi-Fi? As soon as that motherfucker hits 25 people, that's it. You lose your security deposit. Get the fuck on out of that bitch. Oh, you I didn't pay even know that. Time to clean up the house. Exactly, bro. It's it comes. Right. I'm really feeling bedazzled right now, nigga. Hey, 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 what's going on, fashionistas? Let me tell you about bedazzled. The ultimate style haven. We're talking eyewear that will make you the star of any show. And it charms so cool, they'll charm the pants off of everyone. Think unique. Think bold. Think for dazzle. 
This ain't your regular fashion game, folks. We're talking about standing out, turning heads, and rocking that look like nobody else. Get ready to dazzle. Get ready to own the spotlight. Because with Bedazzle, you're the fashion icon. Now let's get back to the show, you heard? Social Club. Sterling Social Club. Yes, sir. Go follow that, bro. It's a certain lifestyle you can live with these guys, man. So, so after the... We would pull up to the house. I wish I was your guys' friends. That's just fucking cool, man. You guys got an invitation <laughs> to the next one. Trust me. The next one's going to be crazy. We got we to gotta pull up close, with something, too. Close mouth don't get fed, gentlemen. You see? I just hooked this up with exotic oh, cars man. and fire-ass food, man. Yeah, so, there. elite wait. society, nigga. So, we, we get to the crib. We got masseuses at the crib for all of our guests. We got cocktails. We got tacos. And this is the lunch. This is the lunch after the lunch. We started with a brunch. Now it's the lunch. We're chilling there, smoking up in this beautiful mansion. You can see the ocean and all of downtown from the same fucking point you're standing at. Just look to the left and to the right. That's beautiful right there. And it's a beautiful sunny day. And everybody's vibing and networking and fools already making money just sitting next to each other like, yo, really? I got that. Here you go. Boom, man. Yo, bring that over over there. Like, boom, 50,000 made already just from sitting there. You know what I mean? Like, shit like that. So at the end of the day, bro... We were like, okay, Table full of bosses. Let's, let's, let's gather up, everybody, get back into the cars, and now we go into this Michelin star steakhouse for the dinner. So, this is an all-day experience, bro. This started at 11 a.m., bro. In Beverly Hills. In Beverly Hills on Rodeo Drive, and this shit ended in downtown at 2.30 a.m. No way. Jeez. So, it's an all-day, bro. It's an all-day all experience, day, bro. It's an all-day. So, the only way to get a membership... To my club is to be able to attend a dinner. And how you attend a dinner is if somebody doesn't come. So everybody got a membership card. We only have an X amount of members. If they miss three consecutive events, they forfeit their membership because they never paid for it. It was given. Mm. So it's a privilege to have it. To have it. Either. I'm not trying to come up on you. I'm not doing that thousand dollar a month. Nah, 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 nah. I don't do that, bro. I'm doing this for the community at the end of the day. If I make some money doing it, great. At the end of the day, bro, I'm trying to build something bigger than me, bigger than anything that's around right now. I'm trying to make something that can move from state to state and, and actually be something big, right? So the only way you can get a seat is if somebody misses three. As soon as they miss three, that one seat becomes available, and the world is going to fucking fight over that one seat. Whoever gets to that seat first, that's your hot seat, bro. You got, you got three strikes, and you're out. Has anybody mi- missed a... Missed a- Not one person. <laughs> that's, 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 I would never. You know what? <laughs> I'm just letting the people know <laughs> Not that. one person. Hell, it no. might not even Matter be open, fact, guys. Bro, you can Matter of fact, I got people... Forever. I got people... One, I got one guy, one guy with 60 people waiting... Just to get that seat. Just to get him and 60 of his friends already been. On his seat. No, there's no seats. Or not. Yeah. There's no seats. We yeah. only get, The restaurant can only fit so many people, bro. Yeah. You know what I mean? So we're going to eventually find bigger venues and maybe open up the membership. But for these specific restaurants, the ones that people want to smoke at, you can't fit more than 100 people comfortably, bro. Why would you even want to do that? Why would you want to be around more than 100 people? 100 of the quality people is, is enough. So right now, my members are strong, bro. They ain't missing nothing, bro. We did two of them back to back, bro. Let's go. Sold out of both of them in two weeks. So don't hype the people up. That seat ain't open anytime soon. So the people that get invited are the people that have the membership cards. They get first dibs, first right of refusal. If they miss one, no problem. We'll open up that night on our on our IG. We'll advertise that we got 12 seats, first come, first serve. Those seats fill up. Same shit. But if you miss three consecutively, doesn't matter if we replaced you. During that time, you will lose your, your spot, and the next person will get it. Mm. So that's how we open up the membership. We keep it fair and simple, bro. You want it, It's pay to play. You can't just hold your membership card and not come for six months. This ain't Blockbuster, you feel me? Yeah. Like, you're going to lose <laughs> It ain't Blockbuster. I like that. <laughs> so at the end of the day, bro. You're on Netflix and shit. Now. Shout out to that organization, bro. Shout out to... Shout, you know what I'm saying? Shout out to even keeping something like that alive, bro. And, bro, and honestly, that, that's for the people, by the people, but, you know. Yeah. At the end of the day, I never thought none of this would be. Kind of my whole life is just kind of like, yo, is this really happening? Or am I just living some, I'm like, am I watching somebody else, like, live? Like, what is going on here? Yeah. Who the fuck am I? No, 
I'm, you know what I mean? Like, I never did nothing special in my life. I fucking went to college and fucking was making more money than the teacher in college and fucking dropped out and went to the streets, bro. That's that's what I did, bro. Duh. You know what I mean? Hey, yo, we want to play this dab challenge with you, Let's brother. Do it. You ready? Every t- anytime we're gonna ask you two questions. If you oh, can't, this is gonna be crazy. if you can't answer the question, you gotta take a dab. Well, I, I make sure I got enough butane, bro, because I don't got questions. You guys got like I said, I fucking dropped out of college, went to the streets, boy. You feel me? Right, now these these are easy questions. Right, you know, these you, that, these yeah. you just gotta talk from your heart. All right. All right, gonna bring us home, drip. Yeah, let's get it. Let's get it. Let's get it. Ready for the dab up challenge? Woo! Questions start now. It's not that hard. It's just, it's easy money, man. It's really it's just preferences. Money. Really just preferences. All right, let's get it. Jay Z or Nas? Nas all day, baby. Prada or Gucci? Neither. Neither. But why? It's a dab, though. I mean, bro, if you're gonna that guess, we, if you're gonna get some designer shit, that is a dab. That's a dab. Okay, I'll take a dab. Yeah. <laughs> yeah, that is a dab. Yeah, he caught that one real quick. Like, right? that, that technically uh, is a dab. That's not an answer. Really. If you're gonna buy designer, it better be that special either. shit. If oh, you're gonna buy some shit that everybody else. The rules, the rules on the show is that if you say if you can't decide one or the other, you have to take a dab. Or if you can't Na- even name something special that people don't know about. Nas, Chanel, you know, okay, shit yeah, like yeah. that. You know, if you're gonna nice. spend some money, bro, spend some money. You feel me? Like I, I like La- La- you- Landvin, you know, shit like that. You know, Dior, you know. I mean, Prada's cool, bro. But if they got an outlet for it, I don't want it. Mm. Like I like yeah. that. I don't want it. Cause ninety percent of the shit you be seeing. It's from the motherfucking outlet. He's dabbing up. What, what flavor are you going to dab up right now? Um, I'm going to do our, one of our new flavors, the Tropical Nectar, which is Amarillo 22 times Rainbow Belts. I ain't going to lie. I need to hit a dab of that before you add it. I got you, bro. But that's Ooh. at the end of the show because I ain't going to choke on this shit. I, don't I got you. Pause. <laughs> pause. Yo. Pause, pause, pause. Yeah, I can't. Damn, I need to f*** it. I'm chill. I ain't hitting no none of that. Not on the show. Hey, not on the show. I can't hear it. I can't hear it. Hey, do me like that. Hey, he's trying to do me like that. I can't even hear the fuck. He's like, that's the fucking pause button. Like, like what? <laughs> hey, you gotta hit one of those. Hit, hit, hit that. Nah, bro. That's... Nah, bro. Yeah, yo, the logo of his company is on the rig. Yeah, bro. I got it. Oh, bro. I know. I see that's, that. That's custom made. Yeah. Did you get a shot of that? That's what's what's your glass yeah. game looking like? Bro, honestly, um, if it wasn't for the glass community, I probably wouldn't have had all my clients, bro. So because I was, I, I was like, okay, now where, where do I find the customers? Yeah. Yeah. Right? Where you find the bong is where you find the customer, bro. Uh... So I'm doing all the trade shows with Newport Butane. And if you guys know what Champs in Las Vegas is, it's a big bong convention. So now I'm selling butane to the smoke shop. My buddy makes a glass. I don't know if you know him. Monarch? Mm, maybe. Sounds familiar. He used to work. Uh, he used to do silica. Oh, I know silica very well. Shout out Besco. You yeah, know, they, Besco they, and yeah. they know that. silica, they, but they, they don't really make their shit no yeah, more. Yeah, they, 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 they out of commission. A though. lot of the glass blowers, though, that works for silica, which is one of my, my boys, he has his brand called Monarch Glass. And oh, I'm, I remember. They had some shit there. They had some, like, some yeah, smaller that, rigs there. I remember Monarch Glass for sure. Yeah, they're cool. They they're like, like little, little pendants little, and yeah, shit. Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah, they're pretty fire. Back in the day, bro, there wasn't many. Them on the show too, bro. There wasn't many it, options back then. The blow, you gotta, you gotta support the glass for blowers, sure, bro. bro. So that's what it was. They it was need, for, you know, they for, need their shine. So like, my boy was like big in the glass game, and he had a YouTube channel called BHO Films, and he would review all these bongs and like all this oil and like. He was really into it too, because the shit started picking up traction. Everybody had their little niche. So he started collecting all these bongs and like posting them and the bongs at the time were Toro. Everybody wanted a Toro. If you had yeah. a Toro, that was like having the Louis bag. Or I the, remember that. You know what I mean? Little so, Toro. I remember that. Everybody so, had one. So I remember. And the Roar. Roar, exactly. Roar for flour, Toro for oil. And uh, at one point, I remember I saved up my money. I went and got myself a Toro and I got part of the Cool Kids Club. We started doing all these like uh, all these glass shows and going and meeting, networking, smoking. I'd bring my product. I didn't even have a brand yet. So, like, all I knew was I needed to go where, to, where these people were congregating around bongs because that's where I could meet my customer base. Yeah. Mm. Let me take this dab. Yes, sir. Here it is. That's for the dab challenge. You might take another one. That's that, that's that trap next to Woo! 
Ooh. Ooh, look at that cloud. That's Ooh. what we meant. Oh, I forgot we're low on butane. That's why. We oh. still got some. Boy. No, we got, we make it happen. We I feel make like it. he's gonna get through these questions, man. He's gonna get through these easy, man. It's just it's, it's fun. <laughs> okay, so to answer that question that you asked about, um, what, what was the question I answered? I don't even know which one I'm answering anymore. That's the dab challenge. It, it, it was the product. It was the product. Yeah, Gucci one, but you already answered, answered that. answered that. Let's we get got, to the next one. That. We got to the next one. Let's get to the next one, man. All right, New York or Miami. For what? Uh, for promotion or for anything, vacation? Anything. Whatever, whatever you, you answered that earlier. I, I would say I would say New York. New York. For everything. For everything. But hold that's, that's, a, that's a straight answer. Yeah, but wait, wait. You asked, what was the question? New York, New York or, Miami. or Miami? Oh, I thought I thought you said Cali or Miami, and he said New York. I was gonna say damn, nigga. I was surprised. <laughs> <laughs> no way, no way. You're like, faded. No way. <laughs> no way, bro. West Coast till I die, baby. You know what I mean? <laughs> yeah, yo, he was. Put that. All right, let's go. Let's go. Michael Jackson or Prince? Prince. Ooh. Easy Purple about, rain, bro. Purple I was just about to ask rain, why, but easy rain. rain. That's, and Michael went a little weird with the, you know, the surgery, chopping his face you know, off, looking like a woman. Like, I, yeah. it's cool and all, but I can't be listening to a man that looks like a little boy and shit. Like, you know what I mean? <laughs> Naming his kid Blanket and shit. What, uh, that's that's <laughs> on him, bro. That's what him, him and but Blanket's doing very well for himself. Very, for real? What's Blanket Yeah, I mean, bro, he's fucking... Michael Jackson's son. son. He's good. <laughs> <laughs> he's good. He's good. He's, he's good no matter where he's he is. No matter what he's with doing. With a blanket of money <laughs> over his lit, ass. Nah, somewhere, blanket bro. of money. Uh, he's lit somewhere. He's good. Shout all out right, Blanket. All right, all right, Let's go. Next question. Next question. <laughs> Shout out Blanket. Kanye or Drake? Drake. For the dogs. Kanye, <laughs> Kanye on some weird, like... I don't know. Is it, it's because it's rant days right now. Did, uh, were well, you a Drake? I mean, were you a Kanye fan? When when he I've, had his mouth wired shut, that's when I was his fan. Whoa, that was, that was a long oh, ass yeah. time ago. <laughs> Damn. As soon as he opened that bitch up, I was like, yo, you know what? Stick with the Kardashians. Yeah, he's, too, uh, he's, <laughs> he's talking too much. Wire that bitch I'm back up, here. man. Yeah, 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 straight up. <clears throat> All right. Yo, some people are saying uh, his daughter uh, singing that song was a uh, a diss to Drake's song. The Drake kid singing a song? I don't know, but I was actually invited to that whole thing. I dropped off to the my listening phone. party. We went to eat at Pasties in Wynwood, which is two blocks away from where this whole thing was going. My boy's like, yo, if you guys want to come in, I got you. And I was like, you know what? It looks like a like a rave. It's outside. It's <laughs> it's dark outside. I'm like, you know what, bro? I'm full. I got food coma. I don't give a fuck about Kanye or his daughter. <laughs> Why would I go stand with all these fake ass people trying to look at a bunch of nothing. So I was like, you know, you can go. So you dropped him off. He got in. He went in. And she said a few words. I don't even think that's a, you can call that singing. It was like, <laughs> like, you know what she's saying? She said some few words. Whatever. It was, it was, it was, it was cool. It was cool. Scene. It was cool, bro. Whatever. It was cool for her. So she's a kid. I'm not going to talk shit. She's a kid. She's doing her thing. God bless her. She's for real. It's a courage to do that in front of all those people. So, God, you know, God bless her. But. Kanye, on the other hand, I'm gonna fucking need some therapy. That's for sure. He's so. probably in a bunch of therapy. Yeah. All right, let's get to the next one. Next, one. Pinky's hot dogs or cactus tacos? My boy owns cactus tacos all day. Shout out Marlo. Cactus all day. Yeah, yes. Shout out Marlo. Cactus tacos. Where, where they located at? Just shut up. On Vine and Willoughby, I think. Oh, the only spot open till two a.m. If you go on Yelp, tap and put in. in. If you've never been spots there, spots open two a.m. Bro, get the shrimp bowl. Yeah, I mean, bro, anything you get there is gas, bro. It's a family-owned spot. They put a lot of love into it. They've been around for a very long cactus time, bro. Tacos, huh? They got multiple Sarah. locations, bro. That's just Make sure you fire. catch, bro. If you like Mexican food, that's the spot to go to. Fuck a Chipotle. Fuck all that shit. Go hit up a fucking cactus all day. Cactus every day. tacos. Wow. All day. Shout out to cactus tacos. All right, next one, next one, next one. Trump or Biden? Bro, come on. Come on. <laughs> that shit, boy. Make America great again, baby. Oh, yes, sir. Mr. Trump himself. <laughs> Pardon in real niggas out of jail. <laughs> bro, when, when, he was in, when he was in office, bro, uh, I want to see one person. I was like, man, I got robbed this dude to pay my rent. Nobody. Everybody's rich. Everybody got money. Everybody was up, <laughs> nigga. Yeah, no crime. Crime was low. Bro, what do you mean 
crime was non-existent because <laughs> crime was non-existent. You take the money away, guess what? You're gonna bring the animal out of people. That's this is just the beginning of it, bro. I don't even want to get into it, bro. But we coming some, to some, some dark too. times, bro. You better get them. You better be ready, boy. The boys are coming into your window. They that's coming. Just, that's they civil. Coming. That's civil war. <laughs> they coming. Yeah, those wolves, bro, because they can't get you on the streets. Because you stop coming here, they come into your house. They gonna do through that. the knock, chimney. Knock knock. They coming. That we ain't talking up. about in the future. We're gonna have a Santa. civil war and shit. Oh, for sure, it's coming, bro. Them yeah, people boys, don't know about that, but let's. That's a. That's. And my boys be stacking them guns up, bro. They ain't for no reason, bro. They gonna be sitting on the roof like. They know. <laughs> You know what I mean? It's just coming, bro. This they know. Is, this, bro, this has been happening before. It's going to happen again. It ain't nothing new, bro. You got to stay away from the cities. Right, man. Just cities, stay in the hills, stay in the mountains. Get out of L.A., bro. L.A. is... Bro, look at L.A. Look out the window, bro. If motherfucker wants... <laughs> Why we all look? <laughs> man, look, 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 look I'm saying... We high, one, one, one crazy motherfucker. All it takes is one crazy motherfucker, bro. And that's it. All of downtown L.A. is gone. And everybody in it, bro. Why, why would you want to be stuck, stuck here? Damn, I, I live far away, bro. I come here. I drive an hour and a half to get to work every day, bro. Damn, Damn you live in Bakersfield. Yeah, sure. I can. <laughs> for the people, I live in Bakersfield. <laughs> for, the, for, for the audience, I live in Bakersfield. All right, let's get, let's get it. Um, I'm going to give you a hard one right now. Let's do it. I don't know if you... I'm ready. Bloods or Crips? Dab. Damn, bro. I got a lot of homies. You put me on the spot, bro. <laughs> Dab it up. <laughs> That's so Dab fucked up. up, bro. Who the fuck wrote this shit? <laughs> <laughs> Shout out to our producer, DJ. Let him know, Shout man. Keep us going with the good fucker, questions. <laughs> Trying to get people high. Shout out, out here, all man. my <laughs> B's and C's, you know, to make it. He said, I can make the elemental like, P's yeah. happen, bro. He said, I can't. Hey. He couldn't real. even choose, huh? He was like, fuck that, that. Fuck that, bro. That shit going... You don't even know what that would do if I said one or the other, bro. Or, <laughs> you know? You're going to be like, bro, you said Crips. I didn't say nothing, bro. I don't know what you're talking about. I plead the fifth, bro. I, I plead the fifth. He's taking a dab. To help plead the fifth, let me ask you this no, question. Tell us fifth. more about the event you're having. Tell us some things you uh, haven't told us already. So, it's, uh, so the uh, Sterling Social Club is a private members only club. And we're throwing a small soiree for a friend of mine's birthday, A1A Blake. And, um, so it's, it's not an open to the public party. It's a private party. And um, we're doing what we do best. We pull up and pull out. You know, like uh, there's just, just some things that you can explain verbally and some things you gotta just see for yourself, bro. You know what I mean? We went above and beyond for this event to make sure that just like our other experiences, the people that come to this event have an experience of a lifetime. You know what I mean? Like just, just briefly, we got, you know, we got a masseuse again. We got a barber. We got a shoe cleaning service. We got pristine hash rolls Jeez. running two blunt rolling stations. Oh, no. We right. got Alchemist Organic running all of our fresh juices. Homie makes some of the headiest juices in the world. If you're going to Erewhon, you're cheating yourself. You need to be going to Alchemist Organic. <laughs> He's buying all the exotic fruit, the pink pineapple. Homie work the, at Erewhon. The, the uh, yellow kiwis. The, so is that going to be that? That's yeah, crazy. Yeah, he makes juices out of shit that you can't buy in the store, bro. The shit that's like $35 a like pound. Like Zaza juice. Like star fruit juice. He says Zaza, Zaza juice. Oh, yeah. Zaza juice. Like, <laughs> that's the this ain't no fruits. death. This, this ain't no death fruits. juice. Oh, bro, this ain't shit you can get at Erewhon or whatever. Erewhon, huh? This is one guy that. who makes this shit. What's he his name a, again? Alchemist Organic. He has like a $5,000 oh, $5, fresh organic. price. Shout out to him. Alchemist, yeah. I'll let you try that ASAP. Yes, sir. Yes, sir. Alchemist. So we got a mocktail... Uh, going with all of his juices and um, we have a bunch of amazing vendors showcasing their brands um, and uh, we got good food we got kebab senpai if you guys know he makes some of the best kebabs in the game him and his brothers are like industry staples everybody who's in the game in LA knows kebab senpai they pull up with their little grill and they have a very cultural, ethical yep. way of making it. They're the ones it. with the little sticks. Correct. A bunch of them. Yep. So yep. good. Yep. They pop out of Archie's NoHo all the time. Mm -hmm. That's another, mm -hmm. no, that's another uh, uh, vendor we got. Archie's NoHo is busting Yo, out. shout out Archie's, bro. Shout I love Archie's. Archie's. They're going to be there as well. So. Oh, that's dope. Yeah, they're good yeah. people there, bro. Archie's, man. So we got, you got to understand. They're open late too, man. They shout are. out that deli, man. Actually, I won a free sub from them recently, but I'm always going there. Bro, that shit is good, bro. And they got all the snacks. They Got all the exotic yeah, shit and they good ass shit. people, bro. That's what it's about. A, it's about being community, good people, bro. Yeah, it's all about the community. That's, honestly, that's why I go back because 
if we're in LA, I could we could go, I could find a deli anywhere a mile away. But it's about that love. It's about that culture. Exactly. Now what they got with the, like the exotic snacks, like what they doing? They doing something different. Hundred percent. This nigga almost burnt the house. Nigga started a fire hey, back it's there. Bro, we're chilling, bro. <laughs> hey, remember how we were talking about that one guy? <laughs> No, it's, okay. <laughs> yeah, it's okay. We good. We good. Right, so, okay. so, well, what flavor dab you gonna take this one? Switch it up. Switch it up. That, try that. another one. Yeah, he, yeah, he was trying to avoid that. Slow it up. He said, "I'm avoid that one." Uh, no, I'm not, bro. I take, bro. I just judge legends of hash. I was a competitor and a and a judge, and I had from 8 p.m. until 11. No, I'm sorry, 10 a.m. to dab and judge. 65 entries. No way. Jesus. So let me explain to you how I did How that. do you really like judge it when you're you know, high, high off I of don't one. get high, bro. Oh. I smoke like 50, 60 dabs a day. No. So they don't even All phase you. I don't even you. fucking get high. So I'm sitting there and taking high. each dab and rating it based on its high, its taste, smell, color, consistency. I'm documenting all this, right? Dab number one, dab number two, dab number three. I got to like dab 15, 20. I was like midnight. I was already fucking passed out, falling asleep. I was like, yo, I just got to go to sleep. I'm going to wake up at 6 a.m. and I'm going to go right back to it. Fucking light. Fucking it was dark outside. I woke up. It was still dark. Like dusk. I sat down, wa- washed my face, sat down, my fucking cup of coffee, bro. And I got to it, bro. And I ran through all, every single jar. I judged every single entry and I submitted it right on Right on the time. That means I didn't have time to go up to the bathroom. I didn't have time to get up to answer the phone. I was dabbing from 6 a.m. straight until 10.30, nonstop. Without, and exactly 10.25, I was like, clock. No. 100%. Fuck. 100% is the only way to do it. And all, all the competitors all said, like, yo, it's crazy that they got us doing it like this. Because like, some of these dudes that make hash, they can't even smoke like that. So fools were like, yo, like we barely pulled through and like we had to like That's what I'm saying, like we were wow. like at some of them we weren't even smoking, we were just looking at them like, nah, fuck this shit is trash. Yeah, I'm, <laughs> I'm not hitting that one. Yeah, that's what they were doing. I didn't I'm do good, none of that. I'm I good. hit every single one. Even my boys were like, yo, number well, this is trash. Don't don't smoke it. I was like, bro, that's your throat after however many dabs. You're probably smoking joints. I'm going to give this dude the benefit of the doubt of smoking. Some of the ones my boys told me to try that weren't good were actually not bad. Hey. And I, I voted for them honestly, bro. That's yeah. Good. You good. voted to shit like how you should and shit. Yeah. So, un- uh, you know, unfortunately, we didn't win. We didn't place. I mean, it just makes, you know, an- another opportunity for us to come back even harder next year. But the people that won, you know, shout out to Quality Squishes, my good homie. You know, he, he won. He had some really crazy shit. And... Uh, like, I support everybody, bro. I don't believe in enemies or, like, we do shit against each other. In my community, bro, if you're a good dude or, or woman and you have good morals and understanding of community and compassion and you ain't just a money-hungry leech, parasite, mm. just sit on your neck, stuck into your jugular and just start draining you, I will be there for you to the very end, bro. You can ask about me. I help everybody and, like... Everybody in my circle, all good people, bro. You know, I, I tend to gravitate towards the right people. The yeah. wrong people, I go through them like this. Because if you can't perform, bro, I'm the type of guy. Yeah, you already know. I don't got no attachment to nobody, bro. Nobody was there when, when I was doing this shit. I don't, got no, uh, I don't got nothing to give to nobody that wasn't there. Mm-hmm. You know what I mean? The, the new people that come into my life, you got to work for my shit. If you want to be my friend, you want to be in my circle, perform. If you don't perform, you're not there. Yeah, you, you, you can't. Cut. If you want to shoot me shoot with me shooting in the gym, bro, there's nothing to talk about, bro. You <laughs> feel me? Like, that's just what it is. That's a good mindset. That's that a good ma- That mama mindset. mentality. Yes, since, sir. Since you're a super sir. dabber, we could just get to the next questions and you just stack up yeah, your yeah. dabs. Yeah, yeah, yeah. No, like, I'm good. Just, just write We could just down. number them up and yeah, be yeah. like, oh, yeah, you got f- you got five on deck type <laughs> shit, you know what I'm saying? Yo, you heard him. He's an honest man. He going to do all the He's going to do them all. So it's like- we I got just, nothing to hide, bro. I'm an honest man. I'll go through them all on camera. We don't got to do them off camera. I'll do everything. All right, we got another one. Um. Let's go. Uh, that would don't. Downtown LA or Hollywood? Fuck. Hollywood. Hollywood. Oh. I grew up in the Hollywood. So well, there like, it is. That's the reason. Downtown why. LA is like, if you said downtown LA, fuck. Bro, you, got, <laughs> you must be getting a lot of money in the <laughs> <laughs> penthouse. Yeah, There's the niggas that be doing that shit. Like, oh, yeah, that's my spot. Yeah. <laughs> the yeah. homeless people don't mind them. Oh, no, man. don't mind them. On yeah. the rooftop of garage buildings, you know what I mean? You could, you could be selling some kingpin shit on the rooftop of a garage building, you feel me? Right, right. Oh, we know man. somebody that did yeah, that. Bro. Oh, so, <laughs> you know, some kingpin shit. Some real shit. All right, let's go. Um, the traditional way or the legal way? 
So I love the idea of the legal way, mm -hmm. but the legal way sometimes don't pay the bills. And unfortunately, in this industry, if you don't can't pay the bills, then what the fuck is the point of all this shit, right? Yeah, that's huh, uh, that makes sense. So, you know, the traditional way sometimes, you know, is the only way. So, shout yeah. out to the people that got to do the traditional thing every day. <laughs> you know, I'm blessed that I can do it the legal way now, you okay. know. But at the end of the day, bro, it's like I totally understand it. It's, it goes... Hand in hand, one foot on the left, one foot in the right. That's just <laughs> every other person in the game, bro. Mm. One way or another. And the fucked up shit is uh, the people know it, bro. Like, you know, the people that make these rules, bro, they know it. They made it this way so that every single person had to go back to, you know, that you got licensed, you did all this shit, you got legal, and now they make it impossible for you to survive. So what are you going to do? You're going to go back to whatever you know best. And when you go back to whatever you know best... They come and they take your shit. <laughs> <laughs> I mean, it was a system designed to fail. That's, mm. you, you, you can't make this shit up, bro. So, yeah, that, so the legal so way? never lied, my no, brother. You no, haven't lied now one time on this. Not podcast. the legal not way. Not the legal way. Then. I mean, bro, it, the game is to do, you got to have good lawyers. Mm. You got to know your laws so well. And when you have that recipe together, bro, you play chess. The legal way is chess. Yeah. And what that means is you do everything you can that is in your favor and you play chess with these motherfuckers. Maybe one step ahead, kind of. It's not even one step ahead, bro. You got to follow the rules. You got to pay your taxes. You can't be doing no shady shit. You can't be fucking with your metric. If you're licensed, Stop playing games with that shit. They are going to come after you, bro. <laughs> <laughs> this is, you are not getting away with You're not smart. Like, if they came to my facility, bro, I am ready for them. We have nothing to hide. Everything is transparent. Everything is documented. Everything is official at my house. My house is clean. It's the best way. It's if the only way. If, if they decide to f come after you, bro, the, you, there is nobody. There is nobody that is going to, you know, be able to... Hide from Uncle Sam's magnifying glass. Unfortunately, they made it this way. They're your damn near 50-50 partners. You're paying 43% to them in taxes. Those motherfuckers are your partners. Okay? <laughs> they want to see everything. They want to know everything. They want to know how your wife is doing, how your kids are doing. They're going to make sure to keep a tab on everybody, bro. They're going to see if somebody bought a new Mercedes, somebody who got some new Chanel. They see everything, bro. <laughs> they see it. Oh, that shit is sick, bro. <laughs> I'm stuck. Oh, you said a pistol. Oh, you use a space pack? Yeah. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Okay, okay. Oh, fuck, man. This Molly that's, got me fucked that's the up. one. <coughs> this is one of our winners, bro. Which one's that one? The Molly. Molly? Molly? Let me see that. I like some Molly. of these shit, though. Yo, Have you ever been to a rave mm, before? Molly. We, got, we, we got the bitch with the pacifier in her mouth. On the logo. <coughs> Shit, all right. I see what There's always a bitch in the club with a pacifier. With the light, uh, with the, uh, the light up pacifier. With the gloves with the, that the light end. up on the top. Oh, that's a dope ass <coughs> design. Oh, yeah. Is is that one just? Is that by just by you guys, or was that a collab? No, that was AI. Our graphic designer and AI collab. Yo, <coughs> so your graphic designer worked with AI? A lot of our shit, yeah. My my graphic designers don't play games, bro. How do you feel that's about fine. um AI in general? <laughs> um, I think it's a completely unnecessary thing that, um, you know, people with too much time created and too much money, and that's going to be the detriment of everything that we ever made. You know, we're going to go back to this interview maybe 10, 20 years from now when robots are, you know, doing everything from watching your kid to cooking you food, co doing the surgery, and people just don't have any purpose anymore. Damn. For real, that's how, that's really yeah. how it's gonna be. Yo, bro, do you believe in Shit. aliens? They got weird. Of course, be around. How how the fuck did we get here? Who the fuck built the pyramid, bro? You, you, have you ever done ayahuasca? No, but I've done a bunch of other shit. <laughs> <laughs> so you tapped in. Tapped in. Oh, bro, my, you know, my, my, my eyes, bro, my third eyes have been open, there. bro. So you, know, you, you know about reptilians. Oh, yeah, yeah, yeah. But wait, that's another conversation, bro. <laughs> we don't gotta, gotta get into all that. We, we know. <laughs> bro, I'm, all I'm going to say is this. I'm going to say is this. The pyramids are in a position... It just if I've always as a little kid, I was like, I don't care what no conspiracy theories say, I don't care about no aliens, I don't care about nothing. Yeah. Okay. <laughs> you got these fucking pyramids in the middle of nowhere, right? Mm -hmm. And 
each brick is literally bigger than any human, right? So forget about how they built it, how they made it perfectly mm -hmm. symmetrical and perfectly built it, right? Why did they build it? Why the fuck are they so yeah. big? So if you look at, from Google Maps, the positioning of these pyramids, a round dish would sit on all three of them perfectly. And the saucer or whatever. Yeah, called. and those are stairs to go down for bigger creatures. And why do I say bigger? Why the fuck are the entrances into the pyramids so fucking tall? So I'm thinking maybe there were aliens coming down. That would be their landing thing. And they would walk down the stairs and go into the pyramids. Yeah. That's why they had such big openings. Again, this is just my theory. But I believe for a fact that we're not alone. And NASA has been releasing shit saying that we're not alone. And the universe <laughs> is very big, bro. <laughs> Oh, uh, yeah, they even said the water is bigger than... That shit is crazy. Just you know, at, at the end of the day... It's small. Imagine the water. They bro. say NASA used to study the ocean, and they found some shit so fucking crazy. they like, nigga, we got to study space. We got to get the yeah. fuck up out of here. Yeah. Well, yeah, yeah. Why do you think Elon Musk is trying to colonize Mars, bro? He wants to be the first guy to be like, yo, check it out. You got 20 mil? I got the right place for you. That motherfucker's gonna explode, and you gonna watch 3D, bro. Just look down, and watch them bitches burn. Cause that's what's gonna happen, bro. What we got? 100 years. Look at the way the world is, bro. Everybody fighting everybody. Wait until a nuke goes off. Wait until some big bomb goes off. A couple of them bitches go off. They're thinking, oh yeah, we we're the winners. Nah, bro. We're all the losers, bro. Oh, the, the radiation. The is radiation. Done. The Ozone layer, bro. We're going to make holes in the ozone layer, bro. Gravity, bro. We're going to fucking kill ourselves, dog. And that's why I like... I look at it like this. <laughs> that's just so real. Like, it's so real, I, I look. I look at it like this, bro. Realistically. On God. And a lot of the world leaders are... My nuts is bigger. They, they for, for all on e that Ego, shit, bro. bro. Is there because they're old, bro. Our generation, are like, we struggle so much that what the fuck is an ego? If you have an ego, bro, you either lying to yourself or you got so much fucking money that you're just a piece of shit, bro. Yeah. <laughs> Anybody that's in a struggle, what ego, dog? You got to fucking be humble in these streets to survive now. If you're a fucking piece of shit, okay, you make money today. What about tomorrow? You got to make money long term, right? Yeah. You got to be a good person. If you're a bad person, who the fuck wants to fuck with a bad yeah, person? Yeah, it only lasts so long. Exactly. It never lasts. It never lasts, bro. So I look at it this way. I look at it like you can stay in your lane. I, I was blessed to have this, you know, opportunity to do this weed shit legally, to do what I love every day, day in and day out. No matter how hard it is, I can do this shit. I got the stamina for it. I got the team for it. I got the knowledge and the expertise, and I got the connections to last me a lifetime. And I'm going to keep doing this shit, right? I'm going to stay focused on this shit. I'm not going to focus on no wars. I'm not going to focus on no fucking viruses. I'm not going to focus on no global warming. I'm going to focus on my bag. And any motherfucker try me, bro, you already know what time it is. That's all I know, bro. Anybody try my family, bro? It's, you know what I mean? It like an outro, man. It was ODC, man. That's what it is, bro. Like, we ain't fucking playing games, bro. It's 2024 in this bitch in a few days, bro. The fuck? It's every that's what I've been, that's what I've been, that's what I've been on lately. It's on some other shit. Bro. Yeah, it's like but last year it was like, oh, hey, we're gonna do this together. Now everybody's like, yo, you know what? I can't really help you no more, bro. I, I, I'm sorry. <laughs> that's you, how you, it really you, is. You, bro. you on your own, bro. Like we we've been rocking and shit, but like times are tough, bro. And like you know, that's just what it is, bro. Like fuck, ain't nobody looking out like they used to. You know, shit's not as good as it used to be, bro. Nah, yeah, it's like every man for himself right now out there. Yeah, you know, but I try to change that, bro. I try to lead by example and show people that. You know, it's not like that. It's not like that, bro. It's really not. Even though that's the type. It's got to meet good own. people, like you say. Yeah. And then there's a lot of bad people out there that only want you to lose and fail, and they'll smile to your face and try to take your custies behind your back. Shout out. You know who you are. I know who you are. In case you thought that I didn't. <laughs> <laughs> Shout out to you. You watching? You know. man. He got his eye on you. <laughs> I know, savage. Yeah, you understand, like, the, the, like you Mercedes, huh? The, 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 the streets, bro, is a funny thing, bro. It's like, it's like uh, opportunistic loyalty. There you go. That's the word. They're loyal when there's an opportunity. As soon as the opportunity's gone, the loyalty's gone, right? So, yeah. is that really loyalty to begin with, or is that like a facade or charade? Like, what is that? 
A lot of people claim that they're loyal and they got your back. And then they'll stay through it all. And then, you know, something goes wrong. And then those are the first people to fuck you. The yeah. dudes that you put your head out for, you stuck up for, you saved their asses, you helped them out. Those exact dudes are the ones that are going to fuck you the moment they don't get their way. Not yet. Happens right every on. time. You got to be very, very picky. <clears throat> who you let in. Who you let in, bro. I had and to, shout out to the real ones, bro. I had to go through a lot of employees. I'll tell you that, bro. I believe it, bro. Especially you know like I mean? how you said you gave them the opportunity. They probably looked at it a different way. Oh, bro. They count my pockets. That's bro. what I'm saying. They looked at it a different way. They're like, okay. what? Why am I working and he's making money and yeah. I'm working? Like, it's and not the even funny like thing that. is we, we, we make money, but it goes all back into the company. It's not like I'm fucking driving a Ferrari, No, bro. it's the way they look at it is different, you know? You know what I mean? So it's like at the end of the day, it's like. This shit is a lot of hard work. This is no fun and games. This is hard labor. This is like being a landscaper. Like, this ain't no fucking <laughs> shit, bro. If you wash by hand, we do everything hand washed. We don't use no fucking washing machines. We don't do none of that fucking Chad and Brad shit. We're old school hash Vikings, bro. We fucking wash 30,000 grams <laughs> fresh frozen by hand. Viking. You know what I mean? Like, motherfuckers I'm have so machines Viking. to do that. We do it by hand, bro. We lift the bags by hand. Me and Muscles over here. <laughs> you know what I mean? <laughs> Yo. <laughs> yes, sir. Muscles. Muscles, like, muscles <laughs> bro, I'm telling you, bro. Like this. Muscles, come in here, man. Yeah, bro. <laughs> oh, hey, let, let Muscles take the dab real quick. Shout out yeah. Muscles, <laughs> man. Shout hey, out Muscles. muscles. <laughs> Daddy. What up, Daddy? Uh-huh. Yes, sir. Shout out my yes, man. sir. <laughs> Yes, yeah, sir. Yes, sir. You want to yes, sit down sir. real quick and take a dab? Yeah. Yo, so you go should... right here. He'll pass it to you. Nah, here. Go, yeah. go yeah, right here. Right 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 tap right in, right tap right in right here. He can tap in right here. I'm going to sit right here. He, he can go. Yeah, sit right there. It's cool. Right. I'll pass it to him. Get that shit, daddy. Yeah, bro. Oh, so, so you, you you need a big motherfucker like this to lift up fucking uh, um, uh, 30,000 grams of flour plus water weight plus ice. Shh. So do the math. We're lifting well over 50,000 grams in one bag at a time, bro. Back breaking shit. Like shit that I'm going to regret for the rest of my life to do. I am fucking up my back. I'm fucking up everything. And they, yes, people say, oh, you can get machines to automate it and make it easier. But bro. That is a machine. At the end of the day, bro, <laughs> it's like. When you make it by hand, it's a different type of discipline. You make a different type of fucking product, bro. You have more control over everything. And uh, shout out to all the people that are washing by hand and not cutting corners using machines. Shout out to the people using machines because essentially the quality is still good on both ends. But there's an art to it. If you're an artisan hash maker, you got to do it from the soul. You got to do it by hand. You can't bring in foreign shit and bring in fucking equipment and machinery to just... You know, it just takes away from the whole point of doing it. You're doing it with your hands from your heart. You know what I mean? And you go, you got to do it like that. And w- once you click buttons and remove that aspect where you're not connected to that process anymore, you automate it and it just that loses the whole fucking point of it, bro. You're like, fucking, okay, you made some hash. Big fucking deal. What's the point? And why would I come buy that? Every 20 motherfuckers have that same exact product than, as you. Why am I buying it from you? I know why people buy it from me, because we put our blood, sweat, and tears into that shit. That's why. That's why we get fucking $85, $90 a gram plus tax in all retailers. You can't get our shit for less than $120 a gram out the door. You know, I'm not making that shit up. That's what it is. So, That's fire. Yo, and how, uh, have you always been watching um, Hash, or or did you start doing it when you met him? Well, I've always been in the making Hash since I was young. Same with Tony. I started blasting BHO with my friends in our backyards and just because we strive to smoke the best since we were kids. And once you smoke the best, once you hit the biggest bongs, what's next? Dabs. So we always strive to find the craziest uh, flower we could get and try to blast it and smoke it with our boys. And, you know, we got our little pump, little vac, got everything going and it was fun, but you know, I've never loved doing something as much as making water hash. Mm. I'd have to say bodybuilding and, and hash are my passions in this life. Wow. Damn. For sure. Yeah. Those are two things I want to do for the rest of my life. Yeah, see, I could probably That's two do things this for keep the rest of my life too. Healthy bro. too. Yep. You're gonna be... hey. Yo, you're going to be a good guy to know, bro. You're going to help people stay alive a lot longer because they're healthy. 
And you're going to be able to get them high. Yes, sir. Because what's the point of being alive and around if you ain't having a good time? You got to be medicated. got to stay medicated. Bro, not only does this dude uh, do nutrition plans for people for free just because he knows he's very intelligent. He went to school. This ain't no just like bodybuilder weirdo from the gym. Like this dude's a well-read and like college degree, you know, knowledgeable person. Now, to be able to transform your body, to know how to eat, to know how, how much to take in every day, that's not a dumb person. Exactly. So I, when, I, when I was like, yo, I need somebody to do this that's passionate. And um, I, I had gone through so many people, bro. It's like God almost put homeboy in front of me because he moved here from Dallas. And we just got off, you know, right off the very beginning. And we've known each other for a minute, but we never, like, really did nothing. We were just talking on IG. So homie came out here, and I had to, it took me a year to teach him, bro. He didn't make hash, like, you know what I mean? Like, you had to bring him up to speed. <clears throat> it took me a year. You know, we had our moments and shit, but at the end, you know, the only person in the world that can make hash like me is him. That I've yet to see, bro. Yeah. That I have yet to see. <laughs> I'm, I'm just saying, like, Cheers. and, like, I, I've worked with a lot of hash makers, bro, and a lot of people are lacking integrity. <laughs> They don't know how to listen, to take orders. People think that just because they're making hash, they can control the situation and shit like that, even though they're maybe doing something incorrectly. Nobody wants to learn or have constructive criticism. Everybody like, gets offended and defensive and has some sort of ego issues. And, and that's the whole hash community, bro. So you can imagine how many people I had to go through until God blessed me with Danny, you know what I mean? Because yes, to stand in a cold room at 35 degrees Fahrenheit for fucking soaking wet for 12 hours a day... That only takes a certain type of man. You know what I mean? To be able to drive fucking 30 hours nonstop, no sleep, no break, to drive from here in a freezer truck with seats that don't recline, full of work, drive up to damn near Oregon, Sierra Nevada mountains, in the hills, off-roading with a fucking truck going off of a ledge, like literally driving the truck. You look down and it's just a fucking cliff going down. There's no road. No. There's no way you could reverse. You can't turn around. <laughs> you fuck up, you're dead, bro. That's where we got to go to get this material, bro. We have That's videos nuts, on our page bro. of where we go to get this shit. That's nuts. We've literally almost died multiple times going to get shit. It's like another day for us, bro. This motherfucker crazy, dog. <laughs> <laughs> I hear, bro. Like, this motherfucker, this motherfucker nuts, crazy. I, I come into the washroom in fucking three sweaters, a parka, boots. This motherfucker's Just in, like this right in, here. In flip-flops, <laughs> shorts, and a wife beater in 35 degrees. <laughs> Damn. Yeah. Yo, I mean, I'm telling you, bro. Like you talk about therapy. aliens? That's a motherfucking alien. <laughs> <laughs> That's a living proof of a fucking alien right there. Doesn't feel no pain. Doesn't feel nothing, bro. You work. You know when it's like you work 12, 13 hours with somebody and they're like, bro, I want to go home. I'm so tired. My back hurts. He's like, what are we doing next, bro? 15 hours, 17 hours, 20 hours, 30 hours, right, 50 hours. Going. Not, not like, yo, am I getting paid overtime? I don't even hear that word in the fucking office. He's like, boss, awesome, what, what do we got to do, bro? We, got, we, we just work for 12 hours. Now we got to go drive for 15 hours. And then we got to go work another 12 hours. Let's go. As long as I can hit the gym in between and eat a bunch of meat, we're good, bro. That's all he cares about. <laughs> all he cares about. He's like, bro, he knows me so well. <laughs> all I got to do is fucking make sure he got a fucking ribeye in his hand and some dabs, bro, and he's and good to go. I'm ready for the world. <laughs> <laughs> Literally, bro. You can take on the world. <laughs> simple man, simple man. That's so, yeah. fucking funny, bro. Literally, bro. We're buying some hash. So we like we be coming up with the craziest combinations for our recipes for the flavors. Like our flavors, you can't replicate them. Not nobody else has these combinations. We be sitting there in like a science project, analyzing. Okay, there's these types of monoterpenes in this. They go with these terpenes. We should make this strain and this strain combined. But if we have too much of this, it's gonna dominate this. So we gotta find the right ratio, the correct ratio. We gotta do different batches until we get the right ratio for our palate as soon as we hit it and it's like yo what the fuck then we package it yeah. mm. so we so do you guys are sitting doing research all studying day. all day yeah. he, he does all the r&d for all of our pens and all of our carts we have like thousands of different hardware he fills them all up smokes them we passes them around we figure out which ones we like is we do this shit from the soul if i do not like it i will not sell it mm. in this industry they don't understand that 
They don't even smoke what they sell. They make it, package it, sell it, and then the yeah, consumer gets sick. stuck with it. They buy it because the fucking retailers are responsible for advertising this boof ass shit to people that don't know any better. They're taking advantage of vulnerable customers instead of being like, hey, you know what? That shit right there, I wouldn't smoke that. You shouldn't either. Because they say that, they'll get fired. So they gotta push whatever they gotta push, right? And then who gets stuck with it? The consumer. The consumer's always the one that gets fucked in this shit. Always. It's always the little guy that gets fucked. So and if you don't got good friends that are looking out for you and you smoking in this shit and you're just buying everything you want, just because you think it's good don't mean that it's good. Just because you got high don't mean that that shit is right, bro. I can tell you horror stories of how motherfuckers do shit in this shit, bro. The finesse is real, bro. The game is to be sold, not told. Yes, sir. <clears throat> These motherfuckers really out there jugging and finessing. Bro, and like these people have no clue what they're smoking, bro. No, no idea. If we don't personally love something, we won't put it out. Absolutely it's not. It's like we want to make things that we love so people will enjoy. And then if we make money off it, that's great. Thank you. Oh, yeah, bro. That's we are first off. That's not what we're thinking about. Even myself, when I got into growing weed, it wasn't because I was trying to make a bunch of money. Like, bro, you live in L.A., you look stupid trying to make money growing weed by yourself, you know? Mm. I got into growing weed because I like good weed. Yeah. And to this day, half the shit I grow, people hit me and they're like, hey, you still delivering? I'd be like, no, because I want to smoke it. <laughs> yeah, bro, that's that's how it is, bro. So now every time we get hit up on the, hey, you guys ship, you guys do this, you guys do that. I'm like, no, bro, we're in all these retailers. Just pull up. They got you, bro. Like, it's so much easier. I don't got to be like, y'all go meet up with this dude on the corner. He's wearing a red hoodie. I'm like, go to Cookies, my boy. Look on the menu. You'll see us right then and there, bro. Go to Lemonade. Go to Artist Tree. Dr. Green Thumb. You know what I mean? And a bunch of others. You can find all of the stores that we're in at www.delacreme.la. We got our, our links to all of our retailers. You can catch us at shows. We do a bunch of shows. We're always giving back to the community. We're always supporting everybody. So, <clears throat> I mean, and thank you to all the people that support us. We have people that fly out from different states just to purchase our stuff. Yep. Thank God for Prop, 60, Prop 64. Thank God. You know, no you, hitting, you, you'll be able to go in as a recreational patient flying in from any state and buy our shit. You know what I mean? All you got to have is a 21 and up ID. And most stores in California would allow you to have recreational programs going on. And we're in most of the major recreational stores. And it's been a blessing, you know, to be able to work with them. And, you know, learning the metric system and following the rules has been, you know, a trial and on its own. But we're getting there and we're doing everything correctly. And, you know, we're trying to make sure that we're upstanding citizens and, you know, we follow the rules and do everything by the book because at the end of the day, that's the only way you're going to be able to be here long term. If you start cutting corners and trying to do funny business, anything like that, just leave that shit outside. Don't, don't put your brand on the line. Don't put your employees on the line. Don't put all the people that depend on you to support. Yo, shout out Dank Mob. Shout out Third Dimension. Third Dimension? Yeah, two for the design. Man, nigga, come here, bro. It's <laughs> <laughs> nah, you, you no, I want you to do the drop. Nah, keep filming, keep we'll filming. Do, do nah, this is the drop. This is the drop. Uh, Look, nah, nigga, nigga, I don't know. The, honestly, guys, I don't know the name. We just uh, did a fucking two hour authentic. fucking episode. I'm hashed the fucking. I'm hashed out. Hashed out. Authentic. So tell me about these, bro. Nah, we, <laughs> hey, shout out to Third Dimensions, uh, Head Melt, and fucking Dank Bob and Pristine Hash Rolls for coming out with. Fucking fire, bro. Tell us about this shit. So you open it and what's shit, up? There ain't really nothing much to say, bro. It's just some fucking crazy shit when he smokes that. Thing. How you open it? <laughs> you gotta pull it out, I guess. Pause. 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 See what I'm saying? Pause. pause. <laughs> we pause the commercial. Damn, check that out. Ooh. That's Damn. Pretty much what it is, you Why know? is it a pencil? Well, the guy, uh, Third Dimensions, he made the whole design and he made the pencil uh, basically a tip. You know why he did that? For the SpongeBob whole theme. It's a theme, I think. Nah, he, he did that to subliminally tell you niggas to take notes. <laughs> <laughs> I like that one. Hey, he said, take notes. Take notes, nigga. Hey, that's what he really, <laughs> hey, he really did. Hey, <laughs> hey, shout out to, okay, so shout out to Third Dimension. Shout out to Dank Mob. Shout out to Pristine Hash Rolls. And shout out to Head Mouth. Good looking, man. Take notes. <laughs> take notes. I'm gonna smoke it, nigga. Chill. It's for the ride home, bro. Yeah. <laughs> Right home. Feel me? Is it's it I'm gonna smoke it. I'm gonna smoke it. You don't gotta worry about that. Be live on the line to do some funny business, bro. You wanna do funny business? Step outside, do it outside. Mm. 
-hmm. If you're doing it under your license, you got to be clean as a whistle. You got to be making sure that your books are right. You got to make sure your staff is on point. You ain't don't have no fucking alcoholics or junkies running your books. Because if they fuck up by accident, it don't matter. It's your fault. It's your responsibility to make sure that everything is done correctly. It's nobody's responsibility but yours as a boss. Yes, sir. So if you hire the wrong people and they fuck up, that's on you. That's yes, not sir. on them. Don't yell at them. Yell at yourself. Yes, sir. You know what I mean? No, bro. It's, I'm, glad, I'm, I'm glad when you break shit down, you break it down to the T, bro, because that's the only way people are going to learn from this, bro. And shout out to everybody hash making, bro, and, and the whole culture of it, bro. I'm so glad if anybody had to tell me about this, it was you, bro. You know what I mean? And, like, that's why I said we have a lot to give back to the community, bro. And, like, I don't, I don't fucking sugarcoat nothing. I kind of just tell it how it is. I've been known for that. I'll tell you to your face how I feel. Uh -huh. Hell yeah. Okay, do, we got any more questions? Yeah, yeah. I got a question. I got a question. Go ahead, go ahead, go ahead. Yes, sir. Yes, sir. Joey got a question, man. What we talking about? Nah, bro. So, before I get back, we, you know, Danny, I don't want to take the no, go ahead. Last time we was. Hey, yo, it was a pleasure meeting you, Danny. Once hey, again, man. Danny. Bro. Nice meeting you. Hey, yeah, bro. Danny's working, bro. Keep working, keep doing your shit, bro. Danny's killing it for Della Cream, bro. Nah, I had a question. So we were interviewing uh, somebody out in Coachella the other day, and um, he was asking that. Yeah, he had a lot of stuff that he wanted. To, he wanted to do a collab with and stuff. I was wondering, you know, maybe we could work that out with you guys because he was looking for someone to run their shit. And make Wait, you guys. To make hash? Yeah, to make hash. Well, bro, if as long as they're on metric and everything is... Yeah. yeah. You know it's, what I mean? He's actually on the board of the Marijuana uh, yeah, Business exactly. Society. What's the brand called? Uh, well, he just LA has... LA Cannabis Co. Uh, yeah. He, I've actually... I saw that interview, bro. It was a pretty good interview. I saw you guys were, were doing Yeah, it was that. It was with you, the, it was yeah, with the Armin. owner, Armin. Yeah. Yeah, yeah. Listen, bro. We're all open to work with people that are, you know, same vision as us. If you grow good cannabis, I would love to see the product. And um, if, if, if cannabis is grown correctly and the SOPs could be followed in handling it, because everything is in the handling process, right? Everybody grows good weed, but they fuck it up in mishandling yeah. it. They don't store it correctly. They don't take it down correctly. You, know, you have they, to freeze it, no? You have to freeze it, but you got to do it a certain way. Like, for instance, if you just bag it and throw it in a freezer and then just throw bags on top of each other, right? And it's touching each other. You can't do that. They're not freezing all the way through. you yeah. got to fucking... The only way you can freeze them, I'm giving out free game. I charge a lot of money for consulting. So, you know, you can only catch this type of information at this show. You feel me? So, so if you guys are going to be doing fresh frozen, you got to get the stand up Ziploc bags, the ones that with the bottoms that prop out. And if you filled it up, it would stand up on its own. When you're taking your plants down, you chop at the stock, which is the arm off the plant. You take it. And now you deleaf it. You cut all the big leaves that don't have no sugar. You just cut them at the bottom, right, where the veins are, where the arm is. Not on the leaf, but right where the arm is. You chop it right there, and you deleaf it. And then all you're going to be left with is like a fluffy bud full of sugar. You take that, and at the bottom of the bud, you just snip it right at the stalk. And then that falls into the bag. And then you fill that bag up, standing upright. And then you put that bitch in the freezer standing upright. And then you repeat that process, but you leave at least an inch of space in between each bag and you never stack them. Because if you do that, they're not going to freeze thoroughly. And it's going to start to bud rot. You're going to lose your terpenes. It's going to make an inferior product. It's going to taste like moldy socks. And that's what 80 to 90% of you hash makers fucking put out. So shame on you. So at the end of the day, right there, if you're not properly freezing your shit thoroughly, so how I do it is I'll line up my freezer shelves and let them freeze for about two to three hours. Once I come back, they're frozen. Then I can lay them down flat and stack them. Once they're already frozen, once they've individually froze correctly, and then I just keep them stacked like that, right? Some people just put them in turkey bags and throw them in. Yeah, I see You know that. what I mean? So in the middle of the turkey it bag. It doesn't get cold. It sometimes does and sometimes doesn't. Sometimes you have these people have minus 20 f freezers that are just destroying the terpenes. Yeah. Because terpenes are very fragile, right? So you got to keep it at a certain temperature. At a certain temperature. What most farmers don't know is that you can overfreeze it and kill all of your flavor easily. So whether they're overfreezing the material, fucking it all up, and then people like me come up there and give them 20, 30 bands, and then I drive it back down and wash it, and I'm like, yo, what the fuck is this fucking yeah. shit? And guess what? There's no return. There's no answers in Amazon. You can't do What are you going to do? Yeah. You call them back like, yo, bro, you sold me some bullshit. Like, I sold you some bullshit? Bro, 
I'm the best grower in the world. <laughs> <laughs> Fuck you. Don't ever come back here. <laughs> That's what it is. Take the, me to court. Yeah, That's the legal game, bro. So I got got many fucking times, bro. He's like, I'm the best shit. grower in the world. That's so funny. Motherfuckers really think they're the best growers in the world. They think their shit don't stink. You just know what the, I mean? Just the way how they stored it for you or whatever, how they did oh, it. Oh, they don't know shit about nothing, bro. So it's like you can't even get from them, huh? So you source everything yourself? I then? source everything myself. Me and homie drive from here in our truck. We don't rent nothing. We don't lease nothing. We have our own purchased fucking freezer truck. Caged, insured, licensed, and registered. Not no fucking... You hear that? You know, that That's um, the difference in their brand, bro. Some people got Ferraris. We got freezer trucks. Yep. You know what I mean? So... With the ribeyes. Huh. <laughs> With the ribeyes. Bro, I'm telling you, this journey ain't easy, bro. To fucking get in the car here at like 6 a.m., drive through Frisco, through Santa Rosa, into Eureka, because that's where we shop, bro. We shop only in that region, bro. It's all the way up at home. It's like 9, 10 hours driving, bro. You yeah. can't, I can't just fly there and leave homie to drive by himself. I tried to do that once, bro. My soul was fucked up. I let him drive by himself. I flew. I landed right away. I went to go eat. Homie was just driving by himself for hours. I was like, you yeah, know what? you got to do that run. I was like, I know what? No, I'm just going to do it with him from now on. And we've just been doing it. It's a quick turnaround. We, okay, so check it out. This is how NorCal works, right? So it takes about nine hours to get to where we're going, right? And then from that point, we got to drive another six hours up into the mountains. <laughs> That's okay? Right. So now, 13 hours almost. Ju- just, just to get to farm number one, bro. Yeah. And we got a lot of them bitches, bro. So mm. now we got to take five hours to come back down the hill, drive 45 minutes south, and go another three hours up the hill. Fuck. So, so it's a mission now. Oh, bro, it's a mission, bro. No service. No service. No people. Mountain lions crossing the street. You're mm. in the fucking forest. There's just <laughs> acres and acres and acres, thousands of acres of forest. If you die... It's Nobody the, knows. The mountain lions got it. Yeah, no, I'm telling you, if something happens, your car breaks down, there's no service, you don't got a satellite phone, you're, you're, you're on your own, bro. Yo, it goes, it goes your... down to 30 fucking 8 degrees, 40 degrees, bro. You're, you're going to die. I mean, there's no food, no water. You can't walk nowhere. You will die. Somebody on the street driving will see you. Maybe. 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 Damn. You're the only you one driving. Better hope it's day, hey, too. but yo, boy, because he be in flip-flops in those degrees, so. Oh, bro, he loves this shit, bro. <laughs> <laughs> it's like, just like I do. You got to be a, a certain type of crazy to do this shit, bro. Like, yeah. again, most people sitting at home in their slippers. I don't slippers. know why it's not crazy, though, because y'all love to do this shit, you know? Yeah. Straight up. Y'all, y'all, got, y'all, love to y'all do got wives, y'all got kids. I'm getting married in March. Congrats, oh, wait, bro. Oh, so that. Congratulations, Yo, so man. How, how, what does she do? How does she understand this workload? And this so wifey don't smoke, don't fuck around with weed, but wifey fucks around with me, right? Hey, yeah, Wifey's yeah, been it. there through everything. <laughs> I've been with her for eight years. That's right. She's held me down when I had nothing, when I had no money, when I was a buster. She was paying my bills. I ain't got nothing to hide. She was there for me. She stuck through it all when I had nothing, when I had everything, when shit was bad, when she was good. We didn't have nothing. We had it all. So she's been there through it all with me, and um, she helps me package every trap gram I ever sold. <laughs> Just me and her driving from state to state, breaking fucking jars down, bro. Yeah. The, she's the packaging department. Me and her would just sit down, boom, 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 boom. I would hit all the sessions and shit, and that's what it where we where we came from, bro. That's just what it was. Hell yeah. You know what I mean? So she uh-huh. she she was there through it all, bro. She saw it all, man. She saw the whole thing, all the bad, all the good, all the robberies. She was, I mean, bro, this shit ain't fun and games, bro. You know what I mean? She's been through a lot. That's crazy. That's why I put a ring on it, bro. Yeah, she you never have to. You have to. She never once folded. We never had no. Uh, you know, infidelity problems. You know, it's been geez, that's my best friend, bro. It's like so, no kids yet. No, nah, not yet, bro. So but in the future, for sure, we're gonna. You know, obviously, with time, God bless. You know, but right now, it's it's money. It's go time, yeah. It's, it's go time, time. Right now, bro. I got a goal. I got a goal. I'm gonna get it. I'm gonna win. I'm gonna take my people with me. We're gonna get out of this shit, and we're gonna be able to do something with our lives, bro. Because, so I like that, man. You no, know, I'm tired. I'm tired of this. You know what? What the fuck, bro? The wrong people making all the money, bro. Yeah. All the people like us fucking are out here struggling every day. You got people that don't need all this money fucking in the weed business, just scamming everybody, making endless money off of fucking calling 
distillate fucking live resin liquid <laughs> diamonds. Biggest scam in the fucking world, bro. I've seen that. Selling fucking CRC. To this day. To the, yeah, you CRC know, was the know, main crazy. play. You know, that should need to change, bro. The Yo, craft. And talk about Miami and uh, uh, what you just came from over there. Yeah, man. we went to a poppin' ass event. Uh, we did this thing called Turb Basil. We had a booth and um, there was a lot of shit popping off. There was a lot of art uh, conferences happening. It was Art Basil. So they called it Turp Basil, and there was all the big vendors uh, showcasing their product. And, you know, it was, a, it was a cool little thing to see all the Florida market and the Cali market come together and kind of you're talking to dispensary owners and people that potentially want to license your brand into their stores, and they got all this motion right now. So it was a cool little opportunity to go out there and change my perspective a little bit because we work so much we don't really get out nowhere. You know, we're always in the office working. So all we do is work, work, work every day, seven days a week, weekends too. On my birthday, on New Year's, it don't matter. We working. That's all we fucking do. We work. That's it. Same here, bud. So, you know what I mean? That's what it was. We did Miami. We came back. And now we're doing our Sterling uh, event on Saturday. And um, we're trying to do the same kind of vibe, you know, provide a space for people to network and mingle and um, smoke some good shit and make some new friends and not even on no business shit, just kind of like on some, just like, let's hang out and this is my brand and this is what we do and check, this is what, you know, my prized possession, this is what we, you know, some people bring in their bongs, they have a bunch of collector items, you know, it's just a cool way to bring the community together, you know, people need to do more of these types of events catered around, you know, bringing people together, not just making money. It's not always about making money. You know what I mean? So Yeah, yeah good people, man. Yeah. Respect. Respect that. How do you, uh, you guys want to give them any more questions? Shout-outs? You got any oh, last man, That's pretty much you it. Got any shout-outs to anybody? Uh... Shout-out to the team at Della Cram. You know, shout-out all my farmer partners, you know. Um, there's too many to name. I will start listing them, but everybody that I've collaborated with in the past, you know, thank you for believing in me and giving me the opportunity to shine. Um, my team is impossible to do without a, a solid team. And like I said, I went through a lot of people to get to where I am now with my team. And I ended up just hiring people like Daniel. I hired my best friend from middle school. You know, my wife works in the packaging department. You know, I got a solid dude working graphic design. You know, we got, yeah. we got good lawyers. Shout out to our lawyers. You know, shout out to moms who obviously made me the man I am today and never gave up on me. Mm. You know what I mean? Even though she didn't have a lot to work with, she made it happen. You know what I mean? So, you know, this Hell story yeah, is man. still not over. You know, we, we still climbing. We still, the it's just the beginning, bro. Beginning, you know what I mean? It's just the beginning. It's been a long journey. Yes, it's been a long journey, bro. But I know that, you know, hard work pays off. And, and it's, uh, it's a, been a blessing to see this shit turn into what it's turned into because, like, you know, you get so busy working, and then you step aside. You're like, "Damn, bro, I did that. <laughs> That's just cool. I did that." You know, man, you're working, bro. We see yeah, it. Yeah. I appreciate you for bringing and shit, letting us try all this shit you bring. That shit's fire. Shout out to Danny. Thank Y'all you. working, bro. Thank you Y'all very working. much. Thanks for having us, guys. You know, it's it's been an honor to come on the show and tell my story. And you know, I, I hope to see you guys succeed and. I'm going to bring a lot more people to you guys so you can do your thing because this has been an awesome podcast, awesome experience. Thank you, bro. Oh, thank, you. Yeah. Thank, yeah. You for, th- thank you for sharing and educating. This It's all, it's about entertaining and educating. That's that's the that's our biggest bro. thing, man. And Knowledge is power, bro. Yes, you sir. Know, and, and the people need to be empowered. It's by the people, for the people. Mm. You know what I mean? Yes, sir. We just bless it. We say that all the time. This is, a, this is a drop. You drop so much game, knowledge, like... I, I learned something from this podcast, Mo, so I appreciate what you said and everything, bro. If, if, as long as somebody learned something, bro, and somebody got, you know, a use out of my story, that's all that matters, yeah. bro. Everybody got a story. Exactly. You know I mean, you got to figure out what yours is. Everybody got one. Mm. So I found my story, you know. We'll see what happens. Let's Hell go, yeah, bro. Yeah, we're rooting yeah, for you, bro. Anything thank you need, we're right here. And thank you. Likewise, bro. Think of us 100%. as a platform where if anytime you want to release something or if you see somebody on the podcast and you're like, hey, you know what? I, I think our brand would be pretty good with them. Feel free to reach out, What man. are you guys doing on Saturday? Shit. We got a troll event. What's popping? Yeah. You guys want to do a podcast live and center? Let's go. Let's do it. Talk that I'll shit. I'll give you guys a spot to do it at if you guys want to do it. Let's so go. Yeah, we'll do it for sure. Let's go. Yeah, you already know, bro. This shit ain't for everybody. Is bro. it smoking's coming? 
Where are we going, bro? Where are we going? The hash ball event, bro. Winter hash ball. Winter 16. Let's go. You go find Is It Smoking right there. Live podcast. Let's go, baby. Let's do this shit. And we're going to interview some of your members and and, and hear their story and how they got to meet you guys, man. Exactly, bro. Talk that shit. Shout out DJ. Let them know, man. You put the elements together and look, magic happens. Well, DJ's a magician, bro. I've known that man since the hash bar days. So Mm. that man knows (laughs) He was the one in the hash bar. He was quiet. He was like, I was there. I was bro, there. Bro, he was the one sitting in the hash bar with me, bro. He's a mad boy. He's sitting there quietly because he knows every single thing I said is true. He watched all of it. He's seen every single thing I ever just said. He saw it all. So if my, if I need a vouch, bro, he's right there. Nah, man, no, he he was he was right there like Mister. I don't dab. Was there all the time? <laughs> oh, he dabbed, bro. He, he dabbed. Dab. Dab. <laughs> bro, I remember. I remember you he would get dab. dropped. He would dab. get DJ. You dab. You better take a dab right now. You would get dropped off by I think your grandma, right? Well, your auntie. He said, my, would, she my yeah, she would drop you off. I remember. But I'll be like, yo, that's my boy. <laughs> We sitting there smoking all day, bro. <laughs> That's my boy. <laughs> Hell yeah, man. Yo, shout out to that, bro. And thank you for inviting us to this super exclusive event, bro. We're going to make sure to capture it. and, and I'm and, happy and, to have you guys. You know, it's like I said, it's all about bringing the community together. And, you know, we, we got some crazy people pulling up. And it's going to be a movie. We, I don't even want to talk about it. Just, sounds like a movie already, bro. <laughs> just, bro. just tell me tell you this, bro. We'll that shit is not your regular event. Just, just, we're just waiting until Saturday. Let's get it. Is it smoking exclusive? Make sure to stay tuned. Is it smoking? We out.